Cassie Post, and I know trends. So each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll love in Style Finder. I'm Shop Today Editorial Director Adriana Brock, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm lifestyle expert Jen Fallick, and I love trying out products and finding the best versions of everyday items and elevated essentials. A curated list of better basics. This is Shop All Day Summer Beauty Refresh. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, contributing editor, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. We're right in the middle of summer, and it's about that time when we want to lighten our makeup routine and take care of our skin while spending time in the sun. We're talking about rollers made with volcanic rock to help oily skin to the latest and innovative ways to apply lip color. So stay with us as we not only show you our fab finds, but tell you why we've chosen these products for your beauty refresh. And see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. And we've created a text to shop feature. Simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. I'm excited to show you some of the hottest beauty products of the season. Let's get started with our skin. And since it is summer, the scent, of course, is watermelon. So first up from Ulta Beauty, we have the Watermelon Sleeping Mask. And I mean, everybody loves a little summer watermelon. Well, turns out, so does our skin. Watermelon beauty products are actually a huge trend right now. And actually, watermelon fruit has been used as a beauty care secret for centuries. I mean, it's super hydrating, thus the name watermelon, right? And it also has loads of vitamin E and it's anti-inflammatory. So we were thrilled when we found this little mask that would bring all the watermelon goodness to our skin very easily. So here's how you use it. You just put it on before you go to sleep and you sleep with it, you wake up in the morning and your skin feels hydrated, it's got a glow, it's revitalized. So this is a great little affordable find. Next, we've got an eye mask that I like to call a little miracle, which you have seen all over social media. Now it's from Wander Beauty and they're called the Baggage Claim Eye Masks. And honestly, you can check your under eye baggage at the door with these. They're a multitasker. And what they're gonna do is not only do they reduce puffiness, they also reduce fine lines and wrinkles, they brighten, they hydrate. There's almost nothing these little guys don't do. I mean, they're gold. <laughs> How cool is that? And when I use them, they actually make me feel like giving myself a treat. And that's really great because it's affordable. I don't always have to go to a luxurious spa to feel like I'm taking care of myself. Six come in a pack and these are truly the next level in eye masks. So next up, we have the Brazilian Boom Boom Cream. I know it looks like it says Bum Bum on the little jar here, but in Brazil, they pronounce it boom boom. And trust us, the boom boom in Brazil is a national obsession. And it actually inspired this product. So this product is the best-selling body cream at Sephora five years in a row. And what people love so much about it is it tightens and smooths the skin. And it does that using caffeine. Yes, the active ingredient is caffeine found in guarana. So now that we've got, you know, our skin feeling smooth and tight, how about a little bit of a tan, but a safe glow? And that is Bondi Sands. This self-tanner, to say that it is popular, is an understatement. This is a self-tanner that has a social media following. It is TikTok famous, but here is why it's so popular. First of all, it is so easy to apply. You just use this fabulous little mitt. This mitt, this is also a number one bestseller. And you use it and you get a flawless finish every time. Also, this product, it is never orange. It's never streaky and it is just such a natural glow. So we are really loving this for summer because you can get that great glow without damaging your skin. 
So we've talked about the body, so now let's talk about the brows, which are such a big trend. And I was thrilled to find this product. It's from Wonder2, and it's called the Wonder Brow Waterproof Eyebrow Gel. And oh my goodness, people are loving it so much because it's so easy to use. Those bigger, fuller brows that everybody's uh, wearing now, you know, that are such a big trend, they are gorgeous. I love them. But what about people like me who were not born with big, gorgeous, full brows? So I was thrilled to find this because I tried it and it actually fills in my sparse brows and it looks totally natural. Plus, I mean, it took almost no time. This product is also waterproof and smudge proof. I've tried, you know, with the precision pencils of before to create a brow. I walk outside in the humidity and the heat and the first chance I see a mirror, my entire eyebrows have melted off. Well, no more. This stuff is not going anywhere. It comes in five different shades and it is a game changer. So last but not least, you guys are not going to believe the innovations in lip color technology. I could not believe this product. It's called the Wonder Blading Peel and Reveal Lip Color. So let me explain what this is. So it's like a semi-permanent color that transfers onto the top layer of your lip. But listen to how they do it. They use what's called liquid blading technology. So you take a little lip mask, you apply it to the lip, and then you mist it with an activating mist. And so then you wait 30 seconds and you pull the lip mask off and you've got this gorgeous semi-permanent color. It is smudge proof. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Let's run through all the products one more time. And if you saw anything here you're interested in purchasing, simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we shared on today's show. So we've got the Ulta Beauty Watermelon Sleeping Mask, the Baggage Claim Eye Masks, the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Body Cream, the Bondi Sands Self Tanning Foam, and Bondi Sands Self Tanning Mitt, the Wonder Brow Waterproof Eyebrow Gel, and the Wonder Skin Wonder Blading Lip Peel and Reveal Color. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Adriana Brock is talking to entrepreneur and author Dulce Candy about getting that light glowing summer look. Stay with us.
Hi, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, Shop Today Editorial Director, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. Our show today is all about the best beauty products for summer, so I'm super excited to talk to someone who is definitely in the know on this topic, entrepreneur and author Dulce Candy. And don't forget, there's the QR code at the bottom of your screen. You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it and shop these products right now. Or you can simply text SHOP to the number below to shop everything we're sharing with you today. Hey, Dulce, how are you? It's great to see you. (laughs) Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So we've known you for like more than a decade right now for doing your makeup tutorials on YouTube. And you have millions of followers, a lot of devoted fans. But before you got into the beauty business, you were actually in the US Army. How do you go from being in the Army to pivoting to the beauty business? I just feel like I got really lucky because I started at the very conception of YouTube and I discovered this community uh, full of women and a little bit of men at that time who were just so passionate about discussing makeup and anything related to beauty. And I just felt like since I couldn't really express that side of me, being a woman in the military, I always got in trouble for like, putting a little bit too much mascara or getting my nails done. Um, I just felt really at home within this community um, back in 2008. Wow, so you have a ton of tutorials, like everything from false lashes to bronzer to summer makeup, of course. You must have a most memorable look from all your tutorials. Which one would you say is your favorite? Honestly, one of my favorites, I was wearing like this really bright orange eyeshadow, which I normally don't do on an everyday basis, of course, but I just love to express myself through makeup and use it as a creative art. So whenever I have the time to really get creative and use really bright colors, those to me are like my favorite moments. That's so cool. I mean, that's what makeup's all about, right? Like having a little bit of fun. Do you have any beauty regrets? Because I know I've had a few in my day (laughs) and I'm sure you have if you've made all this content. Honestly, I have so many. Like a lot of my, like whenever I look back through my archives, there's so many cringy moments. Um, (laughs) But I would have to say definitely just over tweezing my eyebrows and having them like really tiny is just not a good look. (laughs) I feel like that's so relatable. We've all had like an eyebrow phase where something went wrong. I wanna switch gears a little bit and talk about summer makeup specifically. So a lot of people, it's hot outside. They wanna lighten up their look for the summertime. Do you have any makeup essentials that you swear by for a great, easy summer look? Yeah, I think for me, like the main focus is definitely the eye makeup. I like to keep it very minimal, so I always love to start off with a nice buildable coverage, something very wearable and something that's not gonna look cakey as far as concealers. So this one is by CoverGirl. It's from their Clean Fresh line. And like I said, it's very buildable, very creamy, and you can either just swipe a few dots underneath your eye to look really refreshed and alive, which is something that I really love. And you can also amp it up if you just need a little bit more coverage. That's a great drugstore find. And I know you have another affordable beauty find. It's the Pixi Mascara. Yes, this is one of my favorite mascaras by Pixi Beauty. This is the Large Lash Mascara. Um, Especially for me since becoming a mom, I don't really have a lot of time to do like the strip lash. So this is gonna give you the look of fake lashes because it has a really incredible brush that is really going to give you a lot of volume length. And it's also really nice if you wanna wear on hot days because it's not gonna melt. I love that. I'm all about like easy concealer, mascara, and you're out the door. Talk to me a little bit more about the, the bronzer you have here and you have the lip oil, which These are pretty unique products that are perfect for summer. For me, for the summertime, this is a product by Physicians Formula. It's the Sculpting Bronzer. And the reason I love this one in particular is because the formula is so easy to blend. You can just swipe it on your face and you're gonna get that beautiful bronzy look. It's also gonna give you a dewy effect because it's a cream product. So I think in the summertime specifically, you want your skin to be nice and dewy and hydrated. It's going you don't want to have too much on. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I love this one. Yeah. And what about this lip oil? I've heard of lip gloss, but tell me about okay. this lip oil. The lip oil, this is incredible. This is a new product from Sigma Beauty. It's the Renew Lip Oils. Okay. And I have all four different colors here, but this is basically a mix between a lip balm 
super hydrating lip balm and a lip gloss. You're gonna have beautiful, beautiful, glossy and hydrated lips throughout the day. What I love about them the most is that they actually match with your own specific skin tone because of the, the way that they're formulated. So they're gonna look completely different on everybody, but again, super wearable and just absolutely gorgeous. That's so unique. I also wanted to ask you, cause you were talking about how like you love this mascara cause you're a mom and you have like no time to get out the door. I'm a mom to be. So I'm looking for some beauty advice from you. What are some simple tricks for any busy woman who just wants to get ready for summer and get out the door? I would honestly say really focus on your skincare because okay. you're not going to have to worry too much about covering up way too many things with foundation and concealer. So if you really take care of your skin, you can literally just use a little bit of concealer and blend it out. Definitely add some mascara, a little bit of lip gloss, and you're out the door. I love it. It's all about simplicity. Thank yeah, you so really. much, Dulce. <laughs> it was so great chatting with you. Hey, thank, thank you, you for so all much. your great tips. Thank you, have a beautiful day. So you're covered on the makeup, but now we're featuring the trending tools to apply it and take it off. Starting with this 14 piece brush set. So no makeup beauty routine is complete without the right tools. And this set right here is a today.com reader favorite. You get 14 brushes for just $10. People love it. It is such an incredible value with brushes that you're actually gonna use. And you know what? This pack is so big, you can even break it up and give some to your friends. It has everything from a foundation brush to a bronzer brush. I mean, it even has a spoolie so you can fluff up your eyebrows in no time. We love this one. The next one we have is the Lux Brush Cleaner and Spinner. It's gonna keep your makeup brushes super clean and you need that to get a perfect application every time. So there's no excuse. All you have to do is use one of the collars that it comes with, you pop it on, and you literally just push a button and it does all the work for you. So there's no effort required here. It's so easy to use. Not only does it wash them, it also dries them for you. So can't go wrong here. And lastly, when you're ready to take all your makeup off, skip the wasteful wipes and try this today.com favorite. It is the original makeup eraser. And this little towel is gonna remove all your makeup with just water. And it's not gonna irritate your skin. It's gonna remove the most stubborn waterproof makeup, whether it's mascara or eyeliner. All you have to do is use the short side with all these short fibers to scrub off the makeup. And then you use the other side to wipe it off. It's so easy to use. We really love this tool. Let's run through all the products one more time. And if you saw anything here that you're interested in purchasing, simply text SHOP to the number below and shop all the products we shared on today's show. We have the Physicians Formula Organic Wear Sculpting Bronzer, the Sigma Beauty Renew Lip Oil, the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Concealer, Pixie Beauty Large Lash Mascara, the BS Small 14-Piece Brush Set, the Lux Makeup Brush Cleaner and Spinner, and the original makeup eraser. Up next, Chassis Post is featuring the latest beauty trends in Style Finder. Stay tuned.
everyone. Welcome back to Shop All Day. I'm lifestyle expert, Jen Fallick. And I'm here to show you some useful products that will make your makeup routine so much easier and solutions for your skin and hair after spending time in the sun. And see the QR code on the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products in the show today. We've also created a text to shop feature. Simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we're sharing with you. So let's get to it. First, let's get everything organized, okay? I just use something like this to organize my makeup. It sits right on my counter and I love it. This is so much better than your basic organizer. This is a 360 degree rotating makeup organizer. And the best part, it's got all of these adjustable shelves so you can really customize it to your needs. It can hold up to 30 makeup brushes, 20 skincare products, plus there's room for nail polishes, lip glosses, all the makeup essentials that you need. And so simple, all you do is give it a spin and you can find whatever it is that you're looking for on any given morning. It speeds up your routine, it makes your countertop look neat, and I also love that this is super easy to clean. Since it's acrylic, just a simple wipe down and it's fresh like it's just brand new. Okay, let's face it guys, we're gonna sweat this summer. It's inevitable. So instead of your basic blotting papers, make sure that you've got this better basic on hand. This uses volcanic stone to soak up excess oil instantly. It's from Revlon and it's a volcanic stone face roller. It works on all skin tones and it's so simple to use. Basically you just pop off the top anywhere that you see shine. I mean, I just use it earlier on my T-zone. It's gonna instantly magnetize away all the shine. The volcanic rock is what really makes this so special. It absorbs everything and it blends seamlessly. So even if you have makeup on, you can still use this over makeup. Again, it's gonna instantly mattify any shine. And I also love that it's reusable. This is almost like a face roller with benefits. Speaking of products with many benefits, I am a huge, huge, huge fan of MD Solar Sciences. Their sunblocks for me have always been a favorite, especially lately as you know, my skin changes a little bit. I love that this product is something that I can use, my kids can use. It's great for sensitive skin. It's the Tinted Mineral SPF 30. The tint actually works on all different skin tones. It blends right into your skin. The texture is really unlike any other sunscreen I've ever used. It's lightweight, it's almost like velvety. I am a huge fan, again, of the mattifying properties of it. The fact that the tint works on all skin tones. As I get a little color, as we get deeper into the summer, I can still use this every single day. It pretty much is like my morning essential, afternoon touch-up, and evening product all wrapped into one. Now onto something super cool and innovative. We all love that look of false lashes, but I gotta be honest, they're not easy to put on yourself. These are better than your basic false lashes. These are magnetic eyelashes. Now, it sounds crazy, a magnetic eyelash, false eyelashes that you can put on by yourself at home. Bear with me, I'm gonna give you the scoop. These things are great. Basically, they come with a magnetic liner. So the trick is in the liner, the liner magnetizes to the lashes. So you apply this just like you would an eyeliner. If you can apply eyeliner, you can apply these. You put this on your lash line, and then you've got all these different sets of lashes in here. They're reusable too, so you're getting 10 sets, but you can reuse them over and over again. You trim them to fit your eye. So it comes actually with a whole kit with these little scissors in there. So you can hold them up, just give them a quick snip on either side so that they fit your eye perfectly. Apply the liner let it dry, put the lash right up to the liner, press it in, and it magnetically sticks together. They're reusable and pretty much as foolproof as false eyelashes can get. Now we are moving on to your hair. So summer can do major damage on hair. I know for me, between the sun, pool, ocean, everything that's going on when you're outside having fun in the sun this summer, your hair pays the price. People are absolutely obsessed with this product. Besides the fact that it's safe for use on color treated hair, which I think is really important, especially in the summer. This protects your hair, so you're not gonna get as much hair breakage, your hair shouldn't be falling out as much, while also deep cleaning your scalp, and so it's gonna hydrate your hair. It kind of covers all the bases. Like with anything, you wanna check with your dermatologist before trying a new shampoo. It's a good one to try. Hair also can get really, really tangled in the summer. Between the pool, the ocean, I've gotta tell you, my six-year-old daughter has the most tangled hair I've ever seen in my entire life. So we are really excited to test this out. This is the Felicia Leatherwood Detangling Hairbrush. What's unique about this brush, besides the fun colors, which just kind of make me happy, this brush is bonded on three sides instead of four. So what that means is 
it can run through your hair without getting all twisted up. You get more flexibility with this, so if you've got a lot of tangles, this is gonna go through your hair much easier. I mean, my daughter has the most sensitive scalp. So whether you've got really kinky curly hair, even if you've got straight hair that tends to get knotted up every now and then, this is a great bet for getting those tangles out. Again, keeping your hair from getting extra damage in a time of year when it tends to suffer the consequences of the season anyway. Huge trend that we're seeing right now in skincare overall is this idea of patches and overnight treatments. So this is the Mighty Patch. This is way, way better than your basic acne treatment, your basic gel, anything that you may use. Upgrade it with a patch. You can see here, they're just these teeny little patches that actually mattify on the skin. They stay on all night. It works over like six to eight hours. The ingredients in there are gonna help to reduce the appearance of a blemish. And then in the morning, when you wake up, you simply peel it off. They adhere right onto your face. You don't feel like you have something on. You don't feel self-conscious about it. They're not bothering your skin while you're trying to sleep. Instead, they're really just delivering great ingredients directly to where you need them to be. Six to eight hours a night, you'll wake up in the morning and you will be your one happy camper. And last but not least, as we are talking beauty sleep, this is the Bed Shore Satin Pillowcase. So we all hear about the benefits of using silk and satin pillowcases for beauty sleep. It helps with hair, skin, all these different things. What I love about these is that satin is actually much more durable than silk. So this is gonna last you a long time. These are stain resistant, comes in all these really great colors. There definitely is something for everybody, no matter what your home decor looks like. And you can easily wash these at home. They're easy to clean, which with silk pillowcases isn't always the case. They're zipper free as well. So you don't have any zippers that are gonna snag on your skin, which again is huge if you're using a satin or silk pillowcase. You wanna make sure that you're getting all the benefits and your hair is getting tangled up in a zipper. The benefits of something like this are so expansive from anti-frizz for your hair, keeping your hair from breaking, wrinkles on your skin. I'm a side sleeper, so I tend to kind of wake up in the morning and if I'm not using a great pillowcase, my skin's all kind of wrinkled up. This is great for maintaining the integrity of your skin, and also it's not gonna wipe off any skincare products that you're using. But again, since it's stain resistant, you don't have to stress out if you put on your, your moisturizer and go right to bed, because it's really easy to clean these. Again, they're super durable. I love the pink, put them on every pillow. I feel like when I have guests, they always appreciate it too. And when you wake up in the morning, your hair still looks as good as it hopefully did the night before. So let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got 360 degree rotating makeup organizer, the Revlon oil absorbing volcanic face roller, MD Solar Sciences mineral tinted face cream SPF 30, the Ari Shine 3D 5D magnetic eyelashes with eyeliner kit, the anti thinning shampoo, Felicia Leatherwood detangling hairbrush, Mighty Patch, and Bedshore Satin Pillowcase. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases that are made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on all your better basics. And for our show, it's been so much fun showing you our favorites. And if you missed something you liked, don't worry. All you gotta do is text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we shared today. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop All Day. Buongiorno today all day. Who doesn't love Italian food? Well, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Saba is putting her own spin on two classic Italian dishes. First, a crispy breaded eggplant that's baked, not deep fried, and gluten-free. Then she whips up a vegan version of a classic pasta dish. Oh, yeah, manja. So when I said cacio e pepe, really, I meant cashew e pepe. Huh? Am I the only one who laughs at my own jokes? <laughs>Hail Italian food. I love it. Some traditional Italian dishes do have a lot of dairy, so I wanted to create some of my favorites with a plant-based twist. Today I'm going to show you how to make a breaded eggplant that uses almond meal instead of breadcrumbs in a really delicious and creamy vegan cacio e pepe. This is hashtag Sama's Italian. Eggplant is a vegetable I kind of tend to forget about the second it enters my kitchen. 
So to use up all of my forgotten eggplant that I've been finding in my fridge, I wanted to create something that had the breading of an eggplant parm, but the snackability of something like a slice of bruschetta. So enter my breaded eggplant. The first thing that we're gonna do is slice our eggplant. Got a cute eggplant here. It's gonna trim the end off and start slicing. Here's a little tip. You don't actually need to salt your eggplant. Traditionally, you'd salt your eggplant to get rid of that bitterness, but nowadays, the bitterness has been bred out of eggplant. I'm slicing my eggplant into little slices that are about a quarter of an inch thick. Perfect. So happy I'm using up my forgotten eggplant. It's just been sitting in there for so long. Okay. I'm gonna let my eggplant hang out here while I make my little egg mixture. I wanted my breading to have a lot of flavor on its own, so in addition to my almond meal, I'm gonna add some of my favorite spices. I'm using almond meal or unblanched almond flour for this recipe, which still keeps the skin on the almonds. I find that this is really nice to add texture and it's a great replacement for breadcrumbs. The cayenne is gonna add a little heat and the turmeric and cumin are my favorite pairing. We cannot forget our salt and pepper. What is life without some salt and pepper? It'd be very unseasoned and boring. Little salt. And some freshly ground black pepper. I like that the turmeric is also gonna add some nice yellow color to this eggplant. Just gonna whisk this until it's nice and well combined. I want the breading to be really flavorful, and so I'm mixing it super well so no piece of eggplant goes unseasoned. That would be really sad. Also super bold of me to wear a white shirt when I'm using turmeric. This is how I live on the edge, okay? Beautiful. The breading is happy. Now time to beat an egg. We wanna whisk the egg until it's completely uniform. We don't want any separation between the yolk and the white. This looks nice and uniform. A perfect little bath for my eggplant. Now it's time to assemble. This eggplant has really been on a journey from being forgotten in the fridge to going down the line to flavor. I mean, lucky eggplant though. We want to dip it straight in this egg mixture. Make sure it's really well coated. Now we don't want any excess egg on the eggplant, so I'm just gonna let it drip out just like this. We want a really nice and even coating of the breading, which is why we're doing this. And now we're gonna put it straight into our breading. Into the parchment paper we go. Now we're just gonna repeat. This is a way better fate for your eggplant than the trash, I'm just saying. Last one, getting a little emotional. Don't worry about those guys though, I promise I will bread them later. We are ready for the oven. Look at those colors, look so pretty. I'm popping these in at 375 degrees for 30 minutes, make sure to flip them halfway through. I think we all need to take a moment just to look at the color alone. Look at that yellow from the turmeric, the little golden crispness on the edges. I'm like drooling already, I really can't wait to eat them. These are perfect on their own, honestly, because they have so much flavor in the breading, but I love to use them as a vehicle for my toppings of choice. This could be a bruschetta, this could be a pesto, even just a little tahini drizzle with some salt is so good. Today, I'm gonna use a bruschetta and a pesto. By the way, you can make your own for sure, but if you wanna buy store-bought too, totally fine with me. Again, what a bold choice of me to cook with turmeric and wear white. Like, I love taking risks. Okay, I'm gonna add some pesto. Let's 
spread that on really nicely. These would make a great app or a side at your next party, or even if you're just partying by yourself. They'd make a great appetizer for you. That's fine. We love that. We love a party of one. These are even good dipped in some marinara sauce, just keeping it super simple. There's so much you can do with them. They taste good with basically everything. For my bruschetta. And because everything is better with a little salt, I'm gonna add some flaky sea salt on top. It's gonna taste really good. It's gonna add a little bit more saltiness, but it's also gonna look really pretty too. Just a little. You know, this eggplant, this middle one, it's not sure what it wants. So it's gonna get both. <laughs> Whoever gets this piece, that's the lucky person at the party. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up, okay. Uh, okay, great. Can't forget a little salt on here. This screams, you need to take a picture of me. So I'm gonna listen. And again, feel free to use whatever toppings you want. This is truly very customizable to your liking and your flavor inclination or whatever you see at the store that you're like, mm, that looks good, I'm gonna put that on my breaded eggplant. I support you. Even hummus, I just thought of that, even hummus. That's what I'm gonna top this with next time. Okay, I for sure got the shot. I got like 15, to be real with you. So now I'm gonna try one. Okay, I'm gonna go for it with this little guy right here. Okay, I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Mmm, so good. I'm serving this at my next party. Even if it's just me, I'm just gonna serve it to myself. I deserve it. This was so yummy. And look what we created. The colors of an Italian flag. I mean, come on, look at that. So cute. I have a question. Are you dairy free and miss the glory days of really creamy, cheesy pastas? Well, you're in luck because my next recipe, my vegan cacio e pepe, has you completely covered. I'm gonna go get the ingredients. Cacio e pepe is one of those dishes that everyone is obsessed with, but if you can't tolerate dairy, it's probably not high on your list. Don't worry though, I'm going to change that because this vegan cacio e pepe is truly going to blow your mind. First up, we're going to make our cashew parmesan, and yes, I did say cashew parmesan. 
To make this parm, we're using a base of cashews, raw cashews, and nutritional yeast for that savory, nutty, cheesy flavor. I'm gonna start by adding my raw cashews into my blender. Make sure your cashews are raw and unsalted. Now for our nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is commonly used as a vegan cheese substitute because it's got this savory, nutty, cheesy flavor. A little bit of umami in there too. Make sure you buy the fortified version because that's the one that has a lot of vitamins and minerals. Now we need some spices. We've got to have a little seasoning. So, got some salt. Salt going in. And some garlic powder. Now, all we're gonna do because my blender is truly my best friend, is blend it all up. Be careful though not to over blend. We just want to blitz it a little bit so we get a nice fine powder, sort of like a Parmesan. And that's perfect. That took less than 10 seconds. Let me show you what it looks like. It smells so good. It's cheesy, it's nutty, it's savory. It's kind of like a nice fine powder, perfect for sprinkling on top of pasta. This makes a little bit more than I'll need for this recipe, so you can totally store this in the fridge for up to a week. Top your popcorn with it, some salads, it's very versatile. And you know what? I'm gonna make my sauce in this blender too, so I'm just gonna transfer this out, keep it over here, don't have to wash any more dishes. I'm being lazy today and that's okay. I still love myself. This is some hashtag precious Parmesan. Can't waste any of it. So the reason I'm starting with the Parmesan is because the Parm is dry, the sauce is gonna be more creamy and liquidy, so that's why we're doing it in this order. Saving us some time, saving us some washing dishes. Now I'm done with my cashew Parm. Time to make the sauce. I'm using soaked cashews to create this sauce. It's gonna make it really creamy, really luscious. When you soak cashews in water, it actually becomes a little bit more pliable and easy to just blend to very delicious sauces and fillings. Just soak them for an hour in hot water. Now I'm just gonna add them to my blender. Come on, you can do it. Because cashews are super buttery, they're really rich, I want something a little acidic and tangy to sort of balance that out. Fresh lemon juice, always. Now I'm gonna add my garlic. I'm using raw garlic here because I want that really punchy flavor. For that really nutty, savory, cheesy flavor, I'm gonna add some nutritional yeast into my sauce. Just adding some salt. And listen, this is a cacio e pepe, after all. So we have to add some pepper. Freshly ground pepper, always. We want that bite. We want it to be really peppery and delicious and be sharp as well. Whenever I make this recipe, I skip my workout. This is it right here. A lot of pepper is necessary. I'm gonna finish it off with some extra virgin olive oil. And then to help the blender move, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water just to get the blender going. You may need to add more water later, but just check the texture of the sauce and then add more as you see fit. It's time to blend. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I mean, it smells so cheesy already. <gasps> I'm in love. Just a little. <gasps> it looks so good. Sorry, that was a little dramatic. I have to show you this texture. I'm gonna give it one more good blend. Every time I make this recipe, I've made it so many times, but I'm always so shocked by how creamy it is without any of the dairy. It's magic. Mmm, it's so good. I don't think it needs anything. Oh my God. Good for me. Okay, let me show you this texture. Oh, it's so peppery. It's like spicy almost, but still super savory and nutty. I love this so much. All right. Can't leave any sauce behind. 
I love a blender pasta sauce. It's so easy. Throw together, minimal prep, minimal ingredients. Look at how creamy and luscious that is. Sauce is done. Now I'm gonna go cook my pasta. Now it's time to cook our pasta. I've already got my water boiling, and don't forget, we must salt our pasta water. Hashtag no bland pasta. It's not good. Okay, the water is ready for my pasta. Just so you know, most dry store-bought pastas are vegan, so if you're looking for that, great. But make sure you do check the label to make sure the variety you're choosing is. I'm using a vegan and gluten-free chickpea pasta. There's a lot of really great bean alternative pastas out these days, and I like testing all of them out. Let's talk about pasta shape. I am using a spaghetti here as an ode to the original. We've changed a lot of things already, but you know what? We're keeping it OG when it comes to the spaghetti, but you can use your favorite shape. I'm a helicopter pasta parent. <laughs> You really do have to keep watching your pasta, especially if you're using an alternative pasta, like a bean pasta, because if you overcook those for too long, it'll become a little gummy. Pasta is such a comfort food. In my household growing up, my parents would just alternate between making Indian food and pasta. That was like, <laughs> that was all we had. It was Indian food or pasta. All right, I'm feeling good about this one. We're done. We're done. Woo! Here's what I wanna do. I wanna save some of that starchy water for later to add to the sauce and pasta to help thicken it and bind it. So I'm gonna save some of that. Just a little for later. I love being prepared. And now I'm just gonna use my tongs and transfer my pasta to my dish. And then I'm just gonna mix the sauce all up. I'm really excited about it. This also keeps the starchy water on the pasta. It doesn't have far to go. Spaghetti's so cute. I love it. All pasta is cute. I don't discriminate. I love all pasta. You know what time it is. It's sauce time. Remember this? Remember our old friend, our cacio e pepe sauce from earlier? It's about to meet the pasta of its dreams. And 
now I'm just gonna add a touch of that pasta water just to help everything mix and combine, get really nice and creamy. Helps the sauce adhere to the pasta. Toss it together. Get the sauce around every single little bit of that spaghetti. It'd be sad if we didn't. And now, time for our cashew parmesan. Ready? I'm gonna mix some in and I'm gonna add some on top as well, just for a little bit of flavor, a little bit of aesthetics. Just like a traditional cacio e pepe, we wanna eat this immediately. We want it to stay hot, stay fresh. So I'm gonna serve this to myself right now. Is this generous? I don't care. Am I just like, are my eyes too big for my stomach? <laughs> no, 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 you'll wanna eat this much, I promise. Okay. I'm gonna cut myself off there. And now, let me just make this look a little pretty with my fork. Twirl this around. And add a little bit of my cashew parm. And by a little bit of my cashew parm, I meant a lot bit of my cashew parm. And the dish wouldn't be complete without it. Some freshly ground black pepper. Okay, I have a vision. I have a vision for a really cute fork twirl photo. I'm gonna work on that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a video. I'm gonna do a video today. That's what's, that's what's happening. Okay, ready? Okay, we got the shot. We got it. We got it. And you know what I also got? The perfect little spiral for me to eat. I'm going for it. Mmm. It is so creamy. Like, I want you to know, this is so creamy. It's cheesy. You've got layers of flavor, right? You've got the buttery cashews creating this really creamy sauce. The black pepper makes it peppery, woody, it's got the sharp bite. And then that salty cashew parm, which I'm just gonna add more of for fun, really ties everything together. You really won't believe there's no dairy in this, I promise. Mmm. Oh, and that garlic, though? That fresh garlic, it's so punchy. Makes it smell really good, makes it taste really good. Someone needs to hold me back because I'll keep talking about this for the whole day. <laughs> this is so delicious. I love creating these really fun plant-based twists on traditional Italian food. It's unique, it's fun, it's inventive, and it's super delicious. there but I'm so glad you're here because I have something I want to tell you hashtag cooking is back with all new episodes and I'm so excited to share my favorite recipes with you
This avocado cream pasta is literally one of my most popular recipes on my blog, and I honestly think it's because you just need a blender to make this super luxurious sauce. So, the base of it is our avocados. I'm using an avocado and a half for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. All right, we're gonna scoop some of this avocado out. Look at how ripe and pretty that is. Go straight in there. This avocado is what's gonna add that super creamy element to this pasta. Now I'm gonna move on to my lemon, adding the juice of one full lemon in here. Make sure I catch all the seeds. This lemon is gonna really make it tart and acidic and bring out that zing, make it very bright and fresh. I'm gonna add some fresh basil and raw garlic. Yes, I'm using raw. It's gonna be really punchy and really bright. And I love garlic. There we go. A Little bit of olive oil. Just a bit. And now I'm gonna season it to taste with some salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Salt in there. Add as much chili flakes as you'd like. I love spice, so I'm going in with a lot. But you make your own choices, okay? Now, just to help everything get moving in the blender, we're gonna add a little bit of cold water. Make sure it's cold because we don't wanna brown the avocado. Just a bit, and I can add more and adjust to get it to the right consistency that I like. Now, it's time to blend. Perfect. It is so luxe, you will not even believe it. Look at that, so creamy. Before I add this creamy sauce to my pasta, I'm gonna grab one more thing. Just grab some arugula from the fridge. I love adding this to this pasta because it gives this really nice peppery bite to it. All right, time to assemble. Got my sauce, gonna add this into my pasta. You might think you put cream in this, but you didn't, I promise. I'm gonna add my tomatoes. Just a little burst of something sweet in with this avocado cream sauce. Now I'm just gonna mix in my arugula. What's great about this pasta as well is that you can eat it immediately, but you can also refrigerate it to have as a pasta salad the next day. We love a leftover. We love a meal prep situation. Is that too much? There's never too much. <laughs> what is a portion? <laughs> some freshly ground black pepper, and a pinch of flaky sea salt. And that is it. But one last thing, can't forget to take a photo. I didn't do all of this for nothing. I love this. I'm gonna frame this. I'm gonna put this on my wall. Okay, here I go. Gotta get some arugula, some pasta in there. Okay. I love myself. <laughs> It's so creamy, you honestly would never know that there's no cream or butter in this. It's crazy. Hey, and welcome to The Boost. Today we are sharing stories all about the people making a positive impact on their communities. From a program encouraging black men to become teachers, to a company bringing flowers and opportunities to Chicago's vacant lots. First up though, a woman in Ohio spreading warmth and kindness at the Cleveland Clinic. Take a look. Meet Peaches. Hi Chris, I'm Peaches. To some, she's Patrice Houston, but on the skyways of the Cleveland Clinic, she is simply known as Peaches. I've been Peaches all my life. When I was born, my father looked at me and said, she has a fuzzy face and rosy cheeks. I think I'll call her Peaches. And where are you headed today? I love helping people. Always been a part of me. I think that's my calling. 22 years ago, Peaches daughter Latrice urged her mom to apply to be a patient transporter at the Cleveland Clinic as a way to the home town she adores. She loves coming here. <laughs> She loves coming to work. It's hard to say that it's work. And we're going to the garage, right? Okay. Peaches is just an extension of the medical staff here because you feel safe. You know, when you see that same face day in and day out, and it's always got a smile on it. This time, we'll go for 
peach cobbler. You got it. Every day she come to work and she cheerful. She never down. She's like the mom of this place. She does it all in the trusty shuttle she named Bessie. I call myself the Cleveland Clinic Uber. <laughs> Bye-bye. See you later. Everyone here is here for a reason. And when they're here with me, I want to make them comfortable and let them know everything is going to be okay. From dropping off patients at follow-up appointments to escorting them to the cancer center, Peaches is there to help make their quarter-mile journey a little less scary. You come up here, you feel lost. She'll just tell us how her day is and how ours is. It kind of relaxes us. She goes fast. <laughs> There's a lot of anxiety, believe me. <laughs> It is a big comfort. And she's such a light, a shining light. And shine she does with more than 40,000 rides over the course of her career. Her impact is immeasurable. You're dealing with folks that are not having the greatest of days and that just never affects the smile on her face. You know, her ability to just kind of roll with that and then help brighten that person's day to where by the time they're done you know, with their interaction with Peaches, they're no longer having a bad day. We don't know what the patients are going through. I just want to let them know I um, extend my heart to you. For Peaches, she gets as much from the patients as they get from her. The impact that the patients have on me makes me humble and make me grounded. I don't like what I do, I love what I do. So I can't imagine myself anywhere else but here. Bless you. And thank you, and bless you too. We are delighted. We are so happy to have Patrice Houston Peaches with us today. Uh, yes. Boy, you are such a bright light. I can see what you're giving to all the patients. What do you get by taking care of them? You know, it, it just makes me proud that I can make someone happy, and it's just me, it's what I do. You know, I think sometimes we forget about all the helpers. Mm -hmm. They come in so many different ways. You know, mm -hmm. you you drive a golf cart, but you also see people at their worst times mm -hmm. and their best. How do yeah. you try to spread joy? You know what? With a hug. Mm -hmm. I, I spread my joy with a hug. I stand my heart and, and give them a hug. Because sometimes I need a hug, you know? Yeah. So I, I think it's really cool because you can see how scared you are when you enter a hospital. We all know it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And there's not usually someone to comfort you in that way. It's mm -hmm. like, go to this place, get that test. And you talking, you even share your own stuff with them. This is how I'm feeling today. I can tell how you put those patients at ease. Do you recognize that? I recognize it because I've been there before myself. Mm. Yeah. I've been a patient myself. Mm -hmm. I walked in a hospital and I was literally scared. Yeah. So. I know that feeling, so I extend it to the patient. Mm. Yeah. Well, do you ever take time off? Yeah. No. You never, you, when was oh, yeah. the last time you had a vacation? Mm, last year, I went to Orlando with my grandchildren. Aww. Yes, but I try to go somewhere every year, but I haven't been anywhere lately. Okay, okay. well, lately. Um, we think it's finally time for mm -hmm. you to take some, some vacation for yourself, okay? What about this? We are sending you on a Mexican vacation. Oh! You and a guest five days, four nights, stay, yes. secret smoke shake, Playa del Carmen. Five days. It's five days. It's a luxury, all inclusive, all -inclusive. resort. Oh! You get to enjoy the beach. See it right there? The beaches, oh! the pools, activities. And you and your guests get to enjoy a spa treatment of your jo choice. Oh, and round trip air fare. You're getting it all. Oh! You're going on vacation. Oh, Peaches. That's what the doctor ordered. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we love you, Peaches. Oh, thank you. I love thank you, you more. We love you. Congratulations, thank you. and thank you for everything you do. Thank oh, you so much. You're All amazing. Right. Now to three mothers and their daughters leaving a lasting legacy at Riley Children's Health in Indianapolis. They are all nurses making a difference in the lives of patients. I'm Melissa Kiesling. And I'm Katherine Kiesling. I'm Peggy Payne. And I'm Sydney Payne. I'm Pam Finley. And I'm Lily Finley, and we're registered nurses at Riley Hospital for Children. I'm just kind of checking in with everybody. I have a great team I work with. We've worked together for many years. I've worked with Melissa and Peggy close to 30 years. And you can't go through the things that we've gone through and not have a special bond. Us three in particular were all pregnant about the same time. That was 1995. Lily is the oldest of the three girls, and then Catherine is the youngest. So we have all have daughters about the same age. Yeah, it was it was fun. These are the new cats. I never thought that they'd be working beside us. It's just it just happened. Part of it was 
when Lily had cancer when she was in college and she was a patient here at Riley, several of my colleagues would come to see her. She just was treated so well by the nurses that took care of her that I think she wanted to give that to other families. I remember the care I got here and when I had surgery here, the nurses were so comforting and understanding and made me feel safe even though I had no idea what was gonna come from it. I had no idea if I was even gonna live. There was, I don't know, 100 plus tumors they took out of my neck that day. I truly understand what it's like to get devastating news and you don't know what's gonna happen. And one of the things about the job that I find most rewarding is being able to be there for not only the patient, but those families. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Kat and I both started as techs and then nursing students on our unit. We didn't find out until later on that we were friends in utero. To know that like our moms have started out doing this together and then to have somebody who's kind of walked a very similar path as you, it's been amazing. Not only do I have my mom, but I have Melissa and Peggy who always are checking up on me and giving me hugs, making sure that I have everything I need. Growing up, my mom was always doing things for other people. There you go. And I've always tried to model that in my behavior and I've always really admired her, excuse me, and looked up to her. And so to feel like I'm kind of falling in her footsteps and making her proud makes me feel really good. Hey, sweetheart. She's super mom, super nurse. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> there's good days and there's bad days in this job, especially these units. Everyone trusts you and <laughs> everyone knows that you're there to help them and you make everyone a priority. How many patients you guys have? I'm very proud of Catherine and what she's doing. This makes me very happy to know that she's part of my work family. I didn't realize how bad <laughs> nurses are. You wouldn't believe how much they can do. My favorite part of Working with her is to walk over onto another unit and be able to give my mom a hug has been really, really awesome. Nursing's tough, especially starting out. It's, especially after 30 years too, it's always tough. So it's always tough. having those friends and people you call family to lean on is really special. Well, let's celebrate nurses, you guys. How about this? We got Melissa and Catherine. <laughs> we have Peggy and Sydney, Pam and Lily. Y'all, these are the mother-daughter duos who all work at the same children's hospital. And guys, we knew that when we heard this story, we actually thought it couldn't be true, <laughs> but it is. How does it feel to know that your daughters have selected your profession? We'll start here. Um, I'm very proud. Yeah. Um, it makes me happy to think that she trust for what I do, that she wants to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very proud of her every day. She has rejuvenated my love for nursing as well. Oh, you know, sweet. I've been a nurse for 33 years and she's been a nurse for two, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've learned so much from her, Aww, you know, yeah. seeing it through fresh eyes. Yeah, yeah. Catherine, um, <laughs> we, I think some of us as moms forget the power yeah. of being one. Yeah. Did you always look up to what she did? Oh my gosh, I mean, Outside of work, like at work, I always look up to her. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm very lucky to follow in her footsteps and do what she does. <laughs> Peggy, what's it like sharing like a workspace with your daughter? What's that like day in and day out? Oh, we love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, our normal day routine is we, on our way to work, we talk on the phone and then we meet each other in the <laughs> parking lot. We're best friends. How <laughs> lucky is that? Oh my God, how fun. Sydney, y'all kind of look alike. Yeah. Do people say that all do the people time? Say yes. That? Yeah. yeah. Do, do yeah. people, are, are there ever yeah, kids or parents who are like, wait, is that your mom? <laughs> yeah, a lot of the times if I announce myself or somebody says my name, especially my last name, they're like, wait, wait a second. Yeah. Yeah. She's worked there for so long. She's worked in so many different areas areas that she's met so many people and so they as soon as they hear that that's my name they can usually put two and two together. <laughs> right. Pam what a beautiful story of you and your daughter your daughter who was actually in the hospital when yes. she was younger that must have been so difficult as a mom and as a nurse. It was very difficult yeah. but she got excellent care um, the nurses were so sweet to her mm -hmm. um, they let her go out and look at the zoo and see oh. the animals <laughs> because Riley is a tower and so you can see the zoo from it. Yeah. So, wow. Lily, yeah. what, what about those incredible nurses yeah. inspire you even now? I mean, they just, 
you can tell they truly care about you as a person. And I was 19 when I had my big surgery there. And, you know, they didn't treat me like a kid, but yet they loved me like they would any other person who's at the hospital and gave me, you know, extra special care. Aww. You guys, this is awesome. I'm so happy <laughs> sitting on this couch with you guys. We do have a surprise for you. You've touched a lot of people's lives, and a few of them wanted just to say thank you. Take a look. We spent almost a year in the CBICU at Riley Hospital with the most amazing nurses. We had spent countless hours in the Riley Heart Center. They were our home away from home. She was at Riley for over 300 days due to complications from a heart and lung defect. When I was nine months old, I had a heart transplant. My nurses helped me get better. We have had the privilege of having all six of you as nurses at one point, and you have made profound impacts on Junior and my family's lives. We just celebrated eight wonderful years with Sawyer's Hero Heart, and we know that it's thanks to the Hero Nurses at Riley that we get to have these moments. Peggy, in particular, was an angel on earth. I know you're all family, but thank you for making us part of your family. We love you, and we can thank you from the bottom of our heart. We love our Riley Nurses! Thank you, I love you. You don't always get to hear from, yeah. from patients no. and their parents. How no. does it feel yeah. to hear that? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times we don't get to see them after they go home. No. And no. I remember taking care of them. Yep. And you know, it's just so special to see that they're doing well. Oh. Oh. Y'all are heroes. You guys, that's yeah. amazing. How yeah. beautiful. You're our yeah. heroes. Coming up, one man's important mission to bring more diversity into the classroom. the boost there's a program in New Orleans helping bring more diversity to the classroom by empowering a new generation of educators Craig Melvin has the story to stand at the head of the class to shape young minds to which ways African Americans use World War II crisis in order to protest against racial discrimination in America teaching more than a career it's a calling especially for Jerome Perkins. So you just woke up one morning and you're like, you know what? Guy was like, you need to be a teacher. He called you to it. Yes, sir. Jerome teaches African-American history at Sophie B. Wright High School in New Orleans. When you finally got into the classroom, do you remember what those, what those few days and those first few weeks were like? I was scared. <laughs> just like anything, it's new to me, so I didn't really know what to expect and I, I just didn't want to be bad at it. I just didn't want to be a bad teacher. Jerome and dozens of educators like him got their start with the help of a fellowship called Brothers Empowered to Teach. The goal is to get more black teachers, specifically male black teachers, in the classroom. The most recent survey shows that black males only account for 1.3% of all public school teachers. Larry Irvin is trying to change that. 
He co-founded Brothers Empower to Teach in 2014. It's a community-based education program for undergraduate college students. Fellows get funding and support. More importantly, they get real classroom experience. Larry's late mother was a teacher. He spent a lot of time in school with her growing up, but as a young man, Larry says his life went down a troubled path with two arrests leading to charges of drug possession and evading police. Larry pled guilty both times and received probation. He turned things around, and after getting the blessing of the school superintendent, he started coaching at his old high school. It just took off. That was a spark. Um, my connection with the, with, with, the, with the young guys, the head coach was like, Larry, have you ever thought about education? Like, because you would be an incredible uh, teacher. Then he started teaching, but he also began studying. He wanted to understand why there are so few black men who become teachers. Why is it so important to have men that look like me and you in the front of a classroom? Kids are what they see. I don't have to go far to see somebody uh, that looks like me playing football. I have to go far to see a rapper. I can go right out my door and see a drug dealer. Education, being a teacher, leading from the classroom and from an intellectual standpoint, that's a different conversation. Since launching, the program has placed 174 fellows. Right now, they're in New Orleans and Baton Rouge with hopes for expansion. Part of the program is nurturing a network. Larry hosts a series of conversations among the fellows called The Cypher. We think, of, we think of from it from a collective black male standpoint, how we're viewed as a group. It's a chance for these young educators to exchange ideas, support one another, and grow. It's working for new teachers like Jerome. It's what you perceive and what you see every day. If I see this every day, that's what I'm stuck to. And for Larry, becoming the change you want to see is a lesson he was taught long ago by his first teacher, his mom. What, what do you think your mother would say about all of this? You got me with that one. She would be quite proud, I would imagine. She was my biggest cheerleader, you know, so. It was like he did it, he turned it around. To say the least. You did. To say the least. We've got more feel-good stories to boost your mood coming up right after the break. to the boost we are celebrating summer with this blooming family business a flower farm in massachusetts began with one woman seed of an idea and thanks to her loved ones it's now grown into something special dylan dreyer has the story 
flowers to me. It just makes people happy. It's food for the soul. Tucked away in the woods of Upton, Massachusetts is a childhood dream come true. In elementary school when the teacher would ask like, draw a picture of your dream job and I drew myself picking strawberries. In a way, I knew I really, really, really wanted to farm. Got some monster bushes over here. Grace Lamb and her employees are up with the morning dew, picking, priming, and packing dahlias, the farm's signature flower. It's becoming a jungle in here. I think we're growing 240 varieties, but there's... Drop in the bucket. Yeah, that's nothing compared to how many dahlias are out there in the universe. It's a love for tending plants cultivated at a young age in a multi-generational immigrant family. I was the one that really enjoyed helping my mom and my grandma out in the garden. That early farming fantasy was lost to the realities of adulthood. Grace went to school for finance and took a lucrative job on Wall Street. I was a equities sales trader, just didn't fulfill me deep inside. So after four years, when Grace's team was downsized. I was out of my apartment in two weeks and I found a job at a farm. I think we all knew deep down that Grace's place was out here in the dirt. From day one, the farm was a family affair. Grace's brother Lee joined her full time. Duped. Yeah. Totally duped. Well, he's always really good at building things. He was actually the sucker, the easiest one to get. <laughs> Five Fork Farms blossomed with the help of her four older siblings and parents. Grace went from her mother's backyard to 38 acres. I don't think Five Fork would have worked, at least in this iteration, if it wasn't our family. The inn is on the right. Grace's father is a fan favorite at the farm, delivering flowers and ushering customers to their farm stand. He sees the business as an opportunity he never got growing up in Cambodia. My wife and I, we grew up happy little family life because of our parents have to make livings. We absolutely don't want our children to live the life like we did. Ten years later, the farm is thriving. Their loyal customer base that's turned into family makes sure the flowers sell out every year. I would say that's what keeps us going. For sure. The joy and happiness that they bring to people's lives. I need to make sure they have that. The family grows the most amazing flowers I've ever seen in my life. It's like an outing for the kids, beautiful flowers for mom. The weather has proven to be an unruly and unpredictable business partner, forcing the lambs to adapt. We've had some sort of weather-related record every season so far. This season in particular, the major drought. And heat. Total 180 from last year. Despite Mother Nature, Grace is still planting her roots. How many times have I quit? Quits about once a year, at least. <laughs> With her family joining every step of the way. It doesn't seem, at least to me, like work. You just keep on going. From one flower business to another, a program on Chicago's South Side is growing hope by using nature to help heal and inspire. NBC's Shaquille Brewster has more. Across Chicago's thorniest neighborhoods, change is blossoming from the ground up. This is really about trying to establish the floral industry as a new anchor industry in urban America. Vacant lots, now fully sustainable flower farms, converted by the nonprofit Keelan Blackwell and his wife Hannah founded in 2014. Uh, we have our double white tulips, we have some of our peach single tulips. Flowers that not only beautify, but empower. The tulips that grow on this flower farm are sorted and arranged here at Southside Blooms, creating jobs for young people in this community. We make bouquets, centerpieces. Youth learning floristry, customer service, and flower farming. Never in a million years would see myself working with flowers because, you know, first, this was my first time ever being in a flower shop, like being around so many flowers. Planting seeds through exposure. Why did you have that skepticism when you first heard about this job? Oh, because I was like, Man, flowers, like, man, I don't plant no flowers, I'm a guy. 
Exposure growing into impact. It taught me patience, like how to control my anger, how to like, you know, this is how you run a business. Like teaching Being me out here to, did that. Yeah. It was like telling me, like teaching me, like you gotta actually put in hard work to see yourself prosper. An impact ripe for delivery. Definitely want to be able to, to replicate this and take it to every major inner city across the United States. Shaquille Brewster, NBC News, Chicago. When we come back, we are sharing the latest viral video that will put a smile on your face. Stay with us. back with the boost with one more video that is sure to make you smile. Check it out. Everyone knows dogs are as loyal as they come, so it's important to return the favor every now and then when we get the chance, like the toddler you're about to see. Here. One for him. <laughs> one for him. Forget this him. guy's got to have one of those. Uh, <laughs> uh, kind of like how the, puppy, uh, how the puppy downs that. All right. Again, one shot each. Uh, that's why those two are going to be besties I forever. Very sweet. That's it for today. Thank you for joining us on The Boost. And we will be back tomorrow with more of your favorite feel-good stories. We'll see you right here on The Boost on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, it worth coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Anal stuff with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The miracle. The miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. Fashion and beauty editor Chassie Post, and I know trends. So each week I'm here with the must have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll love in Style Finder. I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm lifestyle expert Jen Fallick, and I love trying out products and finding the best versions of everyday items and elevated essentials. A curated list of better basics. This is Shop All Day Summer Beauty Refresh. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, contributing editor, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. We're right in the middle of summer, and it's about that time when we want to lighten our makeup routine and take care of our skin while spending time in the sun. We're talking about rollers made with volcanic rock to help oily skin to the latest and innovative ways to apply lip color. So stay with us as we not only show you our fab finds, but tell you why we've chosen these products for your beauty refresh. 
and see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. And we've created a text to shop feature. Simply text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. I'm excited to show you some of the hottest beauty products of the season. Let's get started with our skin. And since it is summer, the scent, of course, is watermelon. So first up from Ulta Beauty, we have the Watermelon Sleeping Mask. And I mean, everybody loves a little summer watermelon. Well, turns out, so does our skin. Watermelon beauty products are actually a huge trend right now. And actually, watermelon fruit has been used as a beauty care secret for centuries. I mean, it's super hydrating, thus the name watermelon, right? And it also has loads of vitamin E and it's anti-inflammatory. So we were thrilled when we found this little mask that would bring all the watermelon goodness to our skin very easily. So here's how you use it. You just put it on before you go to sleep and you sleep with it, you wake up in the morning and your skin feels hydrated, it's got a glow, it's revitalized. So this is a great little affordable find. Next, we've got an eye mask that I like to call a little miracle, which you have seen all over social media. Now it's from Wander Beauty and they're called the Baggage Claim Eye Masks. And honestly, you can check your under eye baggage at the door with these. They're a multitasker. And what they're gonna do is not only do they reduce puffiness, they also reduce fine lines and wrinkles, they brighten, they hydrate. There's almost nothing these little guys don't do. I mean, they're gold. <laughs> How cool is that? And when I use them, they actually make me feel like giving myself a treat. And that's really great because it's affordable. I don't always have to go to a luxurious spa to feel like I'm taking care of myself. Six come in a pack and these are truly the next level in eye masks. So next up, we have the Brazilian Boom Boom Cream. I know it looks like it says Bum Bum on the little jar here, but in Brazil, they pronounce it boom boom. And trust us, the boom boom in Brazil is a national obsession. And it actually inspired this product. So this product is the best-selling body cream at Sephora five years in a row. And what people love so much about it is it tightens and smooths the skin. And it does that using caffeine. Yes, the active ingredient is caffeine found in guarana. So now that we've got, you know, our skin feeling smooth and tight, how about a little bit of a tan, but a safe glow? And that is Bondi Sands. This self-tanner, to say that it is popular is an understatement. This is a self-tanner that has a social media following. It is TikTok famous, but here is why it's so popular. First of all, it is so easy to apply. You just use this fabulous little mitt. This mitt, this is also a number one bestseller. And you use it and you get a flawless finish every time. Also, this product, it is never orange. It's never streaky and it is just such a natural glow. So we are really loving this for summer because you can get that great glow without damaging your skin. So we've talked about the body, so now let's talk about the brows, which are such a big trend. And I was thrilled to find this product. It's from Wonder 2, and it's called the Wonder Brow Waterproof Eyebrow Gel. And oh my goodness, <laughs> People are loving it so much because it's so easy to use. Those bigger, fuller brows that everybody's uh, wearing now, you know, that are such a big trend, they are gorgeous. I love them. But what about people like me who were not born with big, gorgeous, full brows? So I was thrilled to find this because I tried it and it actually fills in my sparse brows and it looks totally natural. Plus, I mean, it took almost no time. This product is also waterproof and smudge proof. I've tried, you know, with the precision pencils of before to create a brow. I walk outside in the humidity and the heat, and the first chance I see a mirror, my entire eyebrows have melted off. 
Well, no more. This stuff is not going anywhere. It comes in five different shades and it is a game changer. So last but not least, you guys are not gonna believe the innovations in lip color technology. I could not believe this product. It's called the Wonder Blading Peel and Reveal Lip Color. So let me explain what this is. So it's like a semi-permanent color that transfers onto the top layer of your lip. But listen to how they do it. They use what's called liquid blading technology. So you take a little lip mask, you apply it to the lip, and then you mist it with an activating mist. And so then you wait 30 seconds and you pull the lip mask off and you've got this gorgeous semi-permanent color. It is smudge proof. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Let's run through all the products one more time. And if you saw anything here you're interested in purchasing, simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we shared on today's show. So we've got the Ulta Beauty Watermelon Sleeping Mask, the Baggage Claim Eye Masks, the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Body Cream, the Bondi Sands Self Tanning Foam, and Bondi Sands Self Tanning Mitt, the Wonder Brow Waterproof Eyebrow Gel, and the Wonder Skin Wonder Blading Lip Peel and Reveal Color. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Adriana Brock is talking to entrepreneur and author Dulce Candy about getting that light glowing summer look. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, Shop Today Editorial Director, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. Our show today is all about the best beauty products for summer, so I'm super excited to talk to someone who is definitely in the know on this topic, entrepreneur and author Dulce Candy. 
And don't forget, there's the QR code at the bottom of your screen. You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it and shop these products right now. Or you can simply text SHOP to the number below to shop everything we're sharing with you today. Hey, Dulce, how are you? It's great to see Hi. you. <laughs> Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So we've known you for like more than a decade right now for doing your makeup tutorials on YouTube. And you have millions of followers, a lot of devoted fans. But before you got into the beauty business, you were actually in the US Army. How do you go from being in the Army to pivoting to the beauty business? I just feel like I got really lucky because I started at the very conception of YouTube and I discovered this community uh, full of women and a little bit of men at that time who were just so passionate about discussing makeup and anything related to beauty. And I just felt like since I couldn't really express that side of me, being a woman in the military, I always got in trouble for like putting a little bit too much mascara or getting my nails done. <laughs> um, I just felt really at home within this community um, back in 2008. Wow, so you have a ton of tutorials, like everything from false lashes to bronzer to summer makeup, of course. You must have a most memorable look from all your tutorials. Which one would you say is your favorite? Honestly, one of my favorites, I was wearing like this really bright orange eyeshadow, which I normally don't do on an everyday basis, of course, but I just love to express myself through makeup and use it as a creative art. So whenever I have the time to really get creative and use really bright colors, those to me are like my favorite moments. That's so cool. I mean, that's what makeup's all about, right? Like having a little yeah. bit of fun. Do you have yeah. any beauty regrets? Cause I know I've had a few in my day <laughs> and I'm sure you have if you've made all this content. Honestly, I have so many, like a lot of my, like whenever I look back through my archives, there's so many cringy moments, um, <laughs> but I would have to say definitely just over tweezing my eyebrows and having them like really tiny is just, not a good look. <laughs> I feel like that's so relatable. We've all had like an eyebrow phase where something went wrong. I wanna switch gears a little bit and talk about summer makeup specifically. So a lot of people, it's hot outside. They wanna lighten up their look for the summertime. Do you have any makeup essentials that you swear by for like great, easy summer look? Yeah, I think for me, like the main focus is definitely the eye makeup. Um, I like to keep it very minimal, so I always love to start off with a nice buildable coverage, something very wearable and something that's not gonna look cakey as far as concealers. So this one is by CoverGirl. It's from their Clean Fresh line. And like I said, it's very buildable, very creamy, and you can either just swipe a few dots underneath your eye to look really refreshed and alive, which is something that I really love. And you can also amp it up if you just need a little bit more coverage. That's a great drugstore find. And I know you have another yes. affordable beauty find. It's the Pixi Mascara. Yes, this is one of my favorite mascaras by Pixi Beauty. This is the Large Lash Mascara. Um, um, especially for me since becoming a mom, I don't really have a lot of time to do like the strip lash. So this is gonna give you the look of fake lashes because it has a really incredible brush that is really going to give you a lot of volume length and it's also really nice if you wanna wear on hot days because it's not gonna melt. I love that. I'm all about like easy concealer, mascara, and you're out the door. Talk to me a little bit more about the, the bronzer you have here and you have the lip oil, which. These are pretty unique products that are perfect for summer. Yeah. For me, for the summertime, this is a product by Physicians Formula. It's the Sculpting Bronzer. And the reason I love this one in particular is because the formula is so easy to blend. You can just swipe it on your face and you're gonna get that beautiful bronzy look. It's also gonna give you a dewy effect because it's a cream product. So I think in the summertime specifically, you want your skin to be nice and dewy and hydrated. It's going you don't wanna have too much on. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I love this one. Yeah. And what about this lip oil? I've heard of lip gloss, but tell me about okay. this lip oil. The lip oil, this is incredible. This is a new product from Sigma Beauty. It's the Renew Lip Oils. Okay. And I have all four different colors here, but this is basically a mix between a lip balm, super hydrating lip balm, and a lip gloss. 
you're gonna have beautiful, beautiful, glossy and hydrated lips throughout the day. What I love about them the most is that they actually match with your own specific skin tone because of the, the way that they're formulated. So they're gonna look completely different on everybody, but again, super wearable and just absolutely gorgeous. That's so unique. I also wanted to ask you, cause you were talking about how like you love this mascara cause you're a mom and you have like no time to get out the door. I'm a mom to be, so I'm looking for some beauty advice from you. What are some simple tricks for any busy woman who just wants to get ready for summer and get out the door? I would honestly say really focus on your skincare because okay. you're not going to have to worry too much about covering up way too many things with foundation and concealer. So if you really take care of your skin, you can literally just use a little bit of concealer and blend it out. Definitely add some mascara, a little bit of lip gloss, and you're out the door. I love it. It's all about simplicity. Thank yeah, you so really. much, Dulce. <laughs> it was so great chatting with you. Hey, thank, thank you, you for so all much. your great tips. Thank you, have a beautiful day. So you're covered on the makeup, but now we're featuring the trending tools to apply it and take it off. Starting with this 14 piece brush set. So no makeup beauty routine is complete without the right tools. And this set right here is a today.com reader favorite. You get 14 brushes for just $10. People love it. It is such an incredible value with brushes that you're actually gonna use. And you know what? This pack is so big, you can even break it up and give some to your friends. It has everything from a foundation brush to a bronzer brush. I mean, it even has a spoolie so you can fluff up your eyebrows in no time. We love this one. The next one we have is the Luxe Brush Cleaner and Spinner. It's gonna keep your makeup brushes super clean and you need that to get a perfect application every time. So there's no excuse. All you have to do is use one of the collars that it comes with, you pop it on, and you literally just push a button and it does all the work for you. So there's no effort required here. It's so easy to use. Not only does it wash them, it also dries them for you. So can't go wrong here. And lastly, when you're ready to take all your makeup off, skip the wasteful wipes and try this today.com favorite. It is the original makeup eraser. And this little towel is gonna remove all your makeup with just water. And it's not gonna irritate your skin. It's gonna remove the most stubborn waterproof makeup, whether it's mascara or eyeliner. All you have to do is use the short side with all these short fibers to scrub off the makeup. And then you use the other side to wipe it off. It's so easy to use. We really love this tool. Let's run through all the products one more time. And if you saw anything here that you're interested in purchasing, simply text SHOP to the number below and shop all the products we shared on today's show. We have the Physician's Formula Organic Wear Sculpting Bronzer, the Sigma Beauty Renew Lip Oil, the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Concealer, Pixie Beauty Large Lash Mascara, the BS Small 14-Piece Brush Set, the Lux Makeup Brush Cleaner and Spinner, and the original makeup eraser. Up next, Chassis Post is featuring the latest beauty trends in Style Finder. Stay tuned.
everyone. Welcome back to Shop All Day. I'm lifestyle expert, Jen Fallick. And I'm here to show you some useful products that will make your makeup routine so much easier and solutions for your skin and hair after spending time in the sun. And see the QR code on the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. We've also created a text to shop feature. Simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we're sharing with you. So let's get to it. First, let's get everything organized, okay? I just use something like this to organize my makeup. It sits right on my counter and I love it. This is so much better than your basic organizer. This is a 360 degree rotating makeup organizer. And the best part, it's got all of these adjustable shelves so you can really customize it to your needs. It can hold up to 30 makeup brushes, 20 skincare products, plus there's room for nail polishes, lip glosses, all the makeup essentials that you need. And so simple, all you do is give it a spin and you can find whatever it is that you're looking for on any given morning. It speeds up your routine, it makes your countertop look neat, and I also love that this is super easy to clean. Since it's acrylic, just a simple wipe down and it's fresh like it's just brand new. Okay, let's face it guys, we're gonna sweat this summer. It's inevitable. So instead of your basic blotting papers, make sure that you've got this better basic on hand. This uses volcanic stone to soak up excess oil instantly. It's from Revlon and it's a volcanic stone face roller. It works on all skin tones and it's so simple to use. Basically you just pop off the top, anywhere that you see shine. I mean, I just used it earlier on my T-zone. It's gonna instantly magnetize away all the shine. The volcanic rock is what really makes this so special. It absorbs everything and it blends seamlessly. So even if you have makeup on, you can still use this over makeup. Again, it's gonna instantly mattify any shine. And I also love that it's reusable. This is almost like a face roller with benefits. Speaking of products with many benefits, I am a huge, huge, huge fan of MD Solar Sciences. Their sunblocks for me have always been a favorite, especially lately as you know, my skin changes a little bit. I love that this product is something that I can use, my kids can use. It's great for sensitive skin. It's the Tinted Mineral SPF 30. The tint actually works on all different skin tones. It blends right into your skin. The texture is really unlike any other sunscreen I've ever used. It's lightweight, it's almost like velvety. I am a huge fan, again, of the mattifying properties of it. The fact that the tint works on all skin tones, as I get a little color, as we get deeper into the summer, I can still use this every single day. It pretty much is like my morning essential, afternoon touch up and evening product all wrapped into one. Now onto something super cool and innovative. We all love that look of false lashes, but I gotta be honest, they're not easy to put on yourself. These are better than your basic false lashes. These are magnetic eyelashes. Now it sounds crazy, a magnetic eyelash, false eyelashes that you can put on by yourself at home. Bear with me, I'm gonna give you the scoop. These things are great. Basically they come with a magnetic liner. So the trick is in the liner, the liner magnetizes to the lashes. So you apply this just like you would an eyeliner. If you can apply eyeliner, you can apply these. You put this on your lash line and then you've got all these different sets of lashes in here. They're reusable too. So you're getting 10 sets, but you can reuse them over and over again. You trim them to fit your eye. So it comes actually with a whole kit with these little scissors in there. So you can hold them up, just give them a quick snip on either side so that they fit your eye perfectly. Apply the liner let it dry, put the lash right up to the liner, press it in and it magnetically sticks together. They're reusable and pretty much as foolproof as false eyelashes can get. Now we are moving on to your hair. So summer can do major damage on hair. I know for me, between the sun, pool, ocean, everything that's going on when you're outside having fun in the sun this summer, your hair pays the price. People are absolutely obsessed with this product. Besides the fact that it's safe for use on color treated hair, which I think is really important, especially in the summer. This protects your hair, so you're not gonna get as much hair breakage, your hair shouldn't be falling out as much, while also deep cleaning your scalp, and so it's gonna hydrate your hair. It kind of covers all the bases. Like with anything, you wanna check with your dermatologist before trying a new shampoo. It's a good one to try. Hair also can get really, really tangled in the summer. Between the pool, the ocean, I've gotta tell you, my six-year-old daughter has the most tangled hair I've ever seen in my entire life. So we are really excited to test this out. This is the Felicia Leatherwood Detangling Hairbrush. What's unique about this brush, besides the fun colors, which just kind of make me happy, this brush is bonded on three sides instead of four. So what that means is 
it can run through your hair without getting all twisted up. You get more flexibility with this. So if you've got a lot of tangles, this is gonna go through your hair much easier. I mean, my daughter has the most sensitive scalp. So whether you've got really kinky curly hair, even if you've got straight hair that tends to get knotted up every now and then, this is a great bet for getting those tangles out. Again, keeping your hair from getting extra damage in a time of year when it tends to suffer the consequences of the season anyway. Huge trend that we're seeing right now in skincare overall is this idea of patches and overnight treatments. So this is the Mighty Patch. This is way, way better than your basic acne treatment, your basic gel, anything that you may use. Upgrade it with a patch. You can see here, they're just these teeny little patches that actually mattify on the skin. They stay on all night. It works over like six to eight hours. The ingredients in there are gonna help to reduce the appearance of a blemish. And then in the morning, when you wake up, you simply peel it off. They adhere right onto your face. You don't feel like you have something on. You don't feel self-conscious about it. They're not bothering your skin while you're trying to sleep. Instead, they're really just delivering great ingredients directly to where you need them to be. Six to eight hours a night, you'll wake up in the morning and you will be your one happy camper. And last but not least, as we are talking beauty sleep, this is the Bed Shore Satin Pillowcase. So we all hear about the benefits of using silk and satin pillowcases for beauty sleep. It helps with hair, skin, all these different things. What I love about these is that satin is actually much more durable than silk. So this is gonna last you a long time. These are stain resistant, comes in all these really great colors. There definitely is something for everybody, no matter what your home decor looks like. And you can easily wash these at home. They're easy to clean, which with silk pillowcases isn't always the case. They're zipper free as well. So you don't have any zippers that are gonna snag on your skin, which again is huge if you're using a satin or silk pillowcase. You wanna make sure that you're getting all the benefits and your hair isn't getting tangled up in a zipper. The benefits of something like this are so expansive from anti-frizz for your hair, keeping your hair from breaking, wrinkles on your skin. I'm a side sleeper, so I tend to kind of wake up in the morning and if I'm not using a great pillowcase, my skin's all kind of wrinkled up. This is great for maintaining the integrity of your skin, and also it's not gonna wipe off any skincare products that you're using. But again, since it's stain resistant, you don't have to stress out if you put on your, your moisturizer and go right to bed, because it's really easy to clean these. Again, they're super durable. I love the pink, I put them on every pillow. I feel like when I have guests, they always appreciate it too. And when you wake up in the morning, your hair still looks as good as it hopefully did the night before. So let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got 360 degree rotating makeup organizer, the Revlon oil absorbing volcanic face roller, MD Solar Sciences mineral tinted face cream SPF 30, the Ari Shine 3D 5D magnetic eyelashes with eyeliner kit, the anti thinning shampoo, Felicia Leatherwood detangling hairbrush, Mighty Patch, and Bed Shore Satin Pillowcase. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases that are made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on all your better basics. And for our show, it's been so much fun showing you our favorites. And if you missed something you liked, don't worry. All you gotta do is text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we shared today. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of SHOP All Day. Buongiorno today all day. Who doesn't love Italian food? Well, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Saba is putting her own spin on two classic Italian dishes. First, a crispy breaded eggplant that's baked, not deep fried, and gluten-free. Then she whips up a vegan version of a classic pasta dish. Oh, yeah, manja. So when I said cacio e pepe, really, I meant cashew e pepe. Huh? Am I the only one who laughs at my own jokes? <laughs>Hail Italian food. I love it. Some traditional Italian dishes do have a lot of dairy, so I wanted to create some of my favorites with a plant-based twist. Today I'm going to show you how to make a breaded eggplant that uses almond meal instead of breadcrumbs in a really delicious and creamy vegan cacio e pepe. This is hashtag Samas Italian. Eggplant is a vegetable I kind of tend to forget about the second it enters my kitchen. 
So to use up all of my forgotten eggplant that I've been finding in my fridge, I wanted to create something that had the breading of an eggplant parm, but the snackability of something like a slice of bruschetta. So enter my breaded eggplant. The first thing that we're gonna do is slice our eggplant. Got a cute eggplant here. Just gonna trim the end off and start slicing. Here's a little tip. You don't actually need to salt your eggplant. Traditionally, you'd salt your eggplant to get rid of that bitterness, but nowadays, the bitterness has been bred out of eggplant. I'm slicing my eggplant into little slices that are about a quarter of an inch thick. Perfect. So happy I'm using up my forgotten eggplant. It's just been sitting in there for so long. Okay. I'm gonna let my eggplant hang out here while I make my little egg mixture. I wanted my breading to have a lot of flavor on its own, so in addition to my almond meal, I'm gonna add some of my favorite spices. I'm using almond meal or unblanched almond flour for this recipe, which still keeps the skin on the almonds. I find that this is really nice to add texture and it's a great replacement for breadcrumbs. The cayenne is gonna add a little heat and the turmeric and cumin are my favorite pairing. We cannot forget our salt and pepper. What is life without some salt and pepper? It'd be very unseasoned and boring. Little salt. And some freshly ground black pepper. I like that the turmeric is also gonna add some nice yellow color to this eggplant. Just gonna whisk this until it's nice and well combined. I want the breading to be really flavorful, and so I'm mixing it super well so no piece of eggplant goes unseasoned. That would be really sad. Also super bold of me to wear a white shirt when I'm using turmeric. This is how I live on the edge, okay? Beautiful. The breading is happy. Now time to beat an egg. We wanna whisk the egg until it's completely uniform. We don't want any separation between the yolk and the white. This looks nice and uniform. A perfect little bath for my eggplant. Now it's time to assemble. This eggplant has really been on a journey from being forgotten in the fridge to going down the line to flavor. I mean, lucky eggplant though. We wanna dip it straight in this egg mixture. Make sure it's really well coated. Now we don't want any excess egg on the eggplant. So I'm just gonna let it drip out just like this. We want a really nice and even coating of the breading, which is why we're doing this. And now we're gonna put it straight into our breading. Into the parchment paper we go. Now we're just gonna repeat. This is a way better fate for your eggplant than the trash, I'm just saying. Last one, getting a little emotional. Don't worry about those guys though, I promise I will bread them later. We are ready for the oven. Look at those colors, look so pretty. I'm popping these in at 375 degrees for 30 minutes, make sure to flip them halfway through. I think we all need to take a moment just to look at the color alone. Look at that yellow from the turmeric, the little golden crispness on the edges. I'm like dribbling already, I really can't wait to eat them. These are perfect on their own, honestly, because they have so much flavor in the breading, but I love to use them as a vehicle for my toppings of choice. This could be a bruschetta, this could be a pesto, even just a little tahini drizzle with some salt is so good. Today, I'm gonna use a bruschetta and a pesto. By the way, you can make your own for sure, but if you wanna buy store-bought too, totally fine with me. Again, what a bold choice of me to cook with turmeric and wear white. Like, I love taking risks. Okay, I'm gonna add some pesto. Spread it 
spread that on really nicely. These would make a great app or a side at your next party, or even if you're just partying by yourself. They'd make a great appetizer for you. That's fine. We love that. We love a party of one. These are even good dipped in some marinara sauce, just keeping it super simple. There's so much you can do with them. They taste good with basically everything. For my bruschetta. And because everything is better with a little salt, I'm gonna add some flaky sea salt on top. It's gonna taste really good. It's gonna add a little bit more saltiness, but it's also gonna look really pretty too. Just a little. You know, this eggplant, this middle one, it's not sure what it wants, so it's gonna get both. <laughs> Whoever gets this piece, that's the lucky person at the party. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up, okay. Uh, okay, great. Can't forget a little salt on here. This screams, you need to take a picture of me. So I'm gonna listen. And again, feel free to use whatever toppings you want. This is truly very customizable to your liking and your flavor inclination. Or whatever you see at the store that you're like, mm, that looks good, I'm gonna put that on my breaded eggplant. I support you. Even hummus, I just thought of that, even hummus. That's what I'm gonna top this with next time. Okay, I for sure got the shot. I got like 15 to be real with you. So now I'm gonna try one. Okay, I'm gonna go for it with this little guy right here. Okay, I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Hmm, so good. I'm serving this at my next party. Even if it's just me, I'm just gonna serve it to myself. I deserve it. This was so yummy and Look what we created. The colors of an Italian flag. I mean, come on, look at that. So cute. I have a question. Are you dairy free and miss the glory days of really creamy, cheesy pastas? Well, you're in luck because my next recipe, my vegan cacio e pepe, has you completely covered. I'm gonna go get the ingredients. Cacio e pepe is one of those dishes that everyone is obsessed with, but if you can't tolerate dairy, it's probably not high on your list. Don't worry though, I'm going to change that because this vegan cacio e pepe is truly going to blow your mind. First up, we're going to make our cashew parmesan, and yes, I did say cashew parmesan. To make this parm, we're using a base of cashews, raw cashews, 
and nutritional yeast for that savory, nutty, cheesy flavor. I'm gonna start by adding my raw cashews into my blender. Make sure your cashews are raw and unsalted. Now for our nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is commonly used as a vegan cheese substitute because it's got this savory, nutty, cheesy flavor. A little bit of umami in there too. Make sure you buy the fortified version because that's the one that has a lot of vitamins and minerals. Now we need some spices. We've got to have a little seasoning. So, got some salt. Salt going in. And some garlic powder. Now, all we're gonna do, because my blender is truly my best friend, is blend it all up. Be careful though not to over blend. We just wanna blitz it a little bit so we get a nice fine powder, sort of like a Parmesan. And that's perfect, that took less than 10 seconds. Let me show you what it looks like. It smells so good, it's cheesy, it's nutty, it's savory. It's kind of like a nice fine powder, perfect for sprinkling on top of pasta. This makes a little bit more than I'll need for this recipe, so you can totally store this in the fridge for up to a week. Top your popcorn with it, some salads, it's very versatile. And you know what? I'm gonna make my sauce in this blender too, so I'm just gonna transfer this out Keep it over here. Don't have to wash any more dishes. I'm being lazy today and that's okay. I still love myself. This is some hashtag precious Parmesan. Can't waste any of it. So the reason I'm starting with the Parmesan is because the Parm is dry. The sauce is gonna be more creamy and liquidy. So that's why we're doing it in this order. Saving us some time, saving us some washing dishes. Now I'm done with my cashew Parm. Time to make the sauce. I'm using soaked cashews to create this sauce. It's gonna make it really creamy, really luscious. When you soak cashews in water, it actually becomes a little bit more pliable and easy to just blend to very delicious sauces and fillings. Just soak them for an hour in hot water. I'm just gonna add them to my blender. Come on, you can do it. Because cashews are super buttery, they're really rich, I want something a little acidic and tangy to sort of balance that out. Fresh lemon juice, always. Now I'm gonna add my garlic. I'm using raw garlic here because I want that really punchy flavor. For that really nutty, savory, cheesy flavor, I'm gonna add some nutritional yeast into my sauce. Just adding some salt. And listen, this is a cachoe e pepe, after all. So we have to add some pepper. Freshly ground pepper, always. We want that bite. We want it to be really peppery and delicious and be sharp as well. Whenever I make this recipe, I skip my workout. This is it right here. A lot of pepper is necessary. I'm gonna finish it off with some extra virgin olive oil. And then, to help the blender move, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water, just to get the blender going. You may need to add more water later, but just check the texture of the sauce and then add more as you see fit. It's time to blend. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I mean, it smells so cheesy already. <gasps> I'm in love. Just a little. It looks so good. Sorry, that was a little dramatic. I have to show you this texture. I'm gonna give it one more good blend. Every time I make this recipe, I've made it so many times, but I'm always so shocked by how creamy it is without any of the dairy. It's magic. It's so good. I don't think it needs anything. Oh my God. Good for me. Okay, let me show you this texture. Oh, it's so peppery. It's like spicy almost, but still super savory and nutty. I love this so much. All right. Can't leave any sauce behind. I love a blender pasta sauce. It's so easy. Throw together. 
minimal prep, minimal ingredients. Look at how creamy and luscious that is. Sauce is done. Now I'm gonna go cook my pasta. Now it's time to cook our pasta. I've already got my water boiling, and don't forget, we must salt our pasta water. Hashtag no bland pasta. It's not good. Okay, the water is ready for my pasta. Just so you know, most dry store-bought pastas are vegan, so if you're looking for that, great but make sure you do check the label to make sure the variety you're choosing is. I'm using a vegan and gluten-free chickpea pasta. There's a lot of really great bean alternative pastas out these days and I like testing all of them out. Let's talk about pasta shape. I am using a spaghetti here as an ode to the original. We've changed a lot of things already, but you know what? We're keeping it OG when it comes to the spaghetti, but you can use your favorite shape. I'm a helicopter pasta parent. <laughs> You really do have to keep watching your pasta, especially if you're using an alternative pasta, like a bean pasta, because if you overcook those for too long, it'll become a little gummy. Pasta is such a comfort food. In my household growing up, my parents would just alternate between making Indian food and pasta. That was like, <laughs> that was all we had. It was Indian food or pasta. All right, I'm feeling good about this one. We're done. We're done. Woo! Here's what I want to do. I want to save some of that starchy water for later to add to the sauce and pasta to help thicken it and bind it. So I'm going to save some of that. Just a little for later. I love being prepared. And now I'm just going to use my tongs and transfer my pasta to my dish. And then I'm just going to mix the sauce all up. I'm really excited about it. This also keeps the starchy water on the pasta. It doesn't have far to go. Spaghetti is so cute. I love it. All pasta is cute. I don't discriminate. I love all pasta. You know what time it is. It's sauce time. Remember this? Remember our old friend, our cacio e pepe sauce from earlier? It's about to meet the pasta of its dreams. Now I'm just gonna add a touch of that pasta water. 
just to help everything mix and combine, get really nice and creamy. Helps the sauce adhere to the pasta. Toss it together. Get the sauce around every single little bit of that spaghetti. It'd be sad if we didn't. And now, time for our cashew parmesan. Ready? I'm gonna mix some in and I'm gonna add some on top as well, just for a little bit of flavor, a little bit of aesthetics. Just like a traditional cacio e pepe, we wanna eat this immediately. We want it to stay hot, stay fresh. So I'm gonna serve this to myself right now. Is this generous? I don't care. Am I just like, are my eyes too big for my stomach? <laughs> no, 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 you'll wanna eat this much, I promise. Okay. I'm gonna cut myself off there. And now, let me just make this look a little pretty with my fork. Twirl this around. And add a little bit of my cashew parm. And by a little bit of my cashew parm, I meant a lot bit of my cashew parm. And the dish wouldn't be complete without it. Some freshly ground black pepper. Okay, I have a vision. I have a vision for a really cute fork twirl photo. I'm gonna work on that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a video. I'm gonna do a video today. That's what's, that's what's happening. Okay, ready? Okay, we got the shot. We got it. We got it. And you know what I also got? The perfect little spiral for me to eat. I'm going for it. Mmm. It is so creamy. Like, I want you to know, this is so creamy. It's cheesy. You've got layers of flavor, right? You've got the buttery cashews creating this really creamy sauce. The black pepper makes it peppery, woody, it's got the sharp bite. And then that salty cashew parm, which I'm just gonna add more of for fun, really ties everything together. You really won't believe there's no dairy in this, I promise. Mmm. Oh, and that garlic, though? That fresh garlic, it's so punchy. Makes it smell really good, makes it taste really good. Someone needs to hold me back because I'll keep talking about this for the whole day. <laughs> this is so delicious. I love creating these really fun plant-based twists on traditional Italian food. It's unique, it's fun, it's inventive, and it's super delicious. there but I'm so glad you're here because I have something I want to tell you hashtag cooking is back with all new episodes and I'm so excited to share my favorite recipes with you
This avocado cream pasta is literally one of my most popular recipes on my blog, and I honestly think it's because you just need a blender to make this super luxurious sauce. So, the base of it is our avocados. I'm using an avocado and a half for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. All right, we're gonna scoop some of this avocado out. Look at how ripe and pretty that is. Go straight in there. This avocado is what's gonna add that super creamy element to this pasta. Now I'm gonna move on to my lemon, adding the juice of one full lemon in here. Make sure I catch all the seeds. This lemon is gonna really make it tart and acidic and bring out that zing, make it very bright and fresh. I'm gonna add some fresh basil and raw garlic. Yes, I'm using raw. It's gonna be really punchy and really bright. And I love garlic. There we go. A Little bit of olive oil. Just a bit. And now I'm gonna season it to taste with some salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Salt in there. Add as much chili flakes as you'd like. I love spice, so I'm going in with a lot. But you make your own choices, okay? Now, just to help everything get moving in the blender, we're gonna add a little bit of cold water. Make sure it's cold because we don't wanna brown the avocado. Just a bit, and I can add more and adjust to get it to the right consistency that I like. Now, it's time to blend. Perfect. It is so luxe, you will not even believe it. Look at that, so creamy. Before I add this creamy sauce to my pasta, I'm gonna grab one more thing. Just grab some arugula from the fridge. I love adding this to this pasta because it gives this really nice peppery bite to it. All right, time to assemble. Got my sauce, gonna add this into my pasta. You might think you put cream in this, but you didn't, I promise. I'm gonna add my tomatoes. Just a little burst of something sweet in with this avocado cream sauce. Now I'm just gonna mix in my arugula. What's great about this pasta as well is that you can eat it immediately, but you can also refrigerate it to have as a pasta salad the next day. We love a leftover, we love a meal prep situation. Is that too much? There's never too much. <laughs> what is a portion? <laughs> some freshly ground black pepper, and a pinch of flaky sea salt. And that is it. But one last thing, can't forget to take a photo. I didn't do all of this for nothing. I love this. I'm gonna frame this. I'm gonna put this on my wall. Okay, here I go. Gotta get some arugula, some pasta in there. Okay. I love myself. <laughs> It's so creamy, you honestly would never know that there's no cream or butter in this. It's crazy. Well, good morning, good to see you. Welcome to The Boost, and it is story time. We are honoring the authors behind the iconic books we've read to our kids over the decades. But first, we're gonna introduce you to some incredible father-daughter duos. Meet. Dad Jay and his daughter Ella. Together they beautifully captured the journey of growing up over the course of 18 years. Jenna Bush Hager shares their sweet story. Here's my birthday. Hi. Hi. My name is Ella. Test, 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 test. Okay, let's start. And look at the other. A birthday oh ritual that began when Ella Rosenblatt was two years old. Every year, me and Dad film together. Oh, yes, for your birthday. Yeah. From the age of two to 18, Ella sat in this exact spot, answering questions from her father, Jay Rosenblatt, a filmmaker. It's so simple and yet profound. What were you hoping to do with it? I just thought that this would be a great project that if it didn't turn into a film, it would be a great archive for her. That keepsake for Ella is now a new HBO documentary, How Do You Measure a Year, which was nominated for an Academy Award. What do you want to do when you grow up? Put on makeup and eat gum. To be a good person, but not be perfect. This is the second year in a row Jay earned an Oscar nod. I like it a lot. I the Jay made three other films with his daughter, but this one is his most personal. 
What do you want to say to your older self? Let's talk about you and me for a second. He asked Ella the same questions year after year, even braving those tween years. Our relationship has been tough this past year. Jay says yearly check-ins about their relationship and added plus. But we always make up and forgive each other in the end, so I feel pretty good about it. Part of the magic is watching his baby grow up right before his eyes. What is power? I don't know. What do you think it means? What does power mean? Power means, I don't know, feel my muscles. Power is being yourself. That takes a lot of power. What else as a father, when you watched it back, came to mind? How amazing a person she is and how much I love her. Ella. As a parent, it goes by so fast. So part of my motivation in filming her is just to hold on to it as long as you can. What would you say about who she's become? Well, I think she's become who she has always been. She's just an older version of it. She's just a wonderful being. I feel so lucky. Wow, we are that so delighted beautiful. to have Jay Rosenblatt with us, along with his daughter. She's 22 now, oh. Ella. She's in San Francisco this morning. Uh, Ella, we'll talk to you in a second. Jay, first of all, did you edit for three years through tears? Because <laughs> I, I mean, just watching that and the, all the home movies. But I mean, you asked such provocative and interesting mm -hmm. questions. You didn't. You asked questions that stood the test of time, mm -hmm. and I think that's why this is so powerful. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, you know, the questions um, are in a way, not the important part of this film. It's, it's seeing her grow up in front of your eyes in such a short amount of time. Yeah. I thought what was interesting was you said she's actually been the same person. She's just kind of evolving. Did you notice that through thread when you looked at her answers when she was three and four and five to now, her teenage years? Well, you know, when she was really young, yeah. the answers were really funny. Yeah. <laughs> and as she gets older, you could see that she's become more socialized and she's just uh, more serious. So there is a through line of her spirit, but the responses are very different. <laughs> Ella, um, as we said, this really is a love letter mm -hmm. that your dad gave to all of us, but it's about you. What did you think when you mm -hmm. first saw the, the film? Yeah, um, it was definitely really surreal to see it. Um, I think, you know, most kids may have a few home movies, but to have this really like meticulously documented footage year to year, um, it kind of feels like, you know, my own personal time capsule in a sense. Well, I think it's so interesting because your dad asked about your relationship with yes. him and you were honest because I think that might be one of those things where you don't want to hurt his feelings if you're going through a difficult spot, but you told the truth. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a testament to our relationship and I also think um, it really, you know, shows the authenticity of the film. Um, we were really honest with each other throughout the whole process. Mm -hmm. Ella, what did you think when you saw it all together, this final product? Did you learn anything about yourself mm -hmm. that you didn't know? Did you view your relationship with your dad a little differently? What impact did it have to see that? Yeah, I mean, I really didn't see any of the footage till it was mostly put together, and so I hadn't remembered most of my answers even at 18. You know, it had been at that point, I think, two or three years since the most recent one and many years since the earlier ones. Um, so it was really, you know, I felt in some ways just like another audience member viewing it for the first time. And then, um, yeah, just so special that my dad put on all this work and I was just really happy to see the final product. Hmm. Well, we know y'all can't be together for Father's Day, but do you want to just say Happy Father's Day to, <laughs> to your dad right, right now yes. on satellite? Yeah, Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love you so much. Oh, oh my gosh. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much. Thank and you said it's never too late to start. We can do it now yes. with our kids. Yeah, that's the thing. We were like, why didn't we do this? But Jay, you think, I mean, people are watching probably yeah. thinking, what a great yeah. idea. What advice would you give? I, I would say it's never too late yeah, because okay. you could always fill in the earlier years with photos, a montage. Uh -huh. There's lots Something. of ways around that. But mm -hmm. what's really valuable is just having this ritual to check in. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, I think that was probably the best thing that came out of wow. this.
From one duo to another, this next father-daughter team is revolutionizing nursery rhymes with a little corner of YouTube that's become a huge hit. Craig Melvin shares their story as part of our Dad's Got This series. They're the children's songs taking the internet by storm. Revolutionizing how we think about nursery rhymes. Let's have my two. All thanks to this father-daughter duo who are putting representation front and center on YouTube Great. with Gracie's Corner. How did all of this get started? For me, it started really out of a result of the pandemic. I saw um, a lot of the content that my kids were watching. One of the things that stood out to me was like, man, there's very few to almost no, no children that look like my daughter that are portrayed on the, on the screen. Two years ago, music was the furthest thing from Javoris Hollingsworth's mind, teaching chemistry at the University of St. Thomas in Houston. I'm a musician turned scientist, now turned back musician. I grew up in the church um, and learned to play the drum and the keyboard. Javoris has since hung off his lab coat to work on the YouTube channel full time with his daughter, Gracie. It was a tough decision because I recognize the impact that I can have in the classroom, but then I also recognize the impact that this channel is having on a global scale. What sound does the letter make? His goal is to empower kids to embrace who they are while learning basic skills. Javoris leans on his wife Arlene's psychology background to make sure the messages are clear. And Gracie is the face and voice of the channel through her cartoon character. From their DIY home studio and with the help of a graphic artist, the two have put a modern spin to those nursery rhymes we all know so well. And are composing original songs as well. One of the things I love about the videos is, is you, you use one of my favorite genres, hip hop, to connect with, with kids. There's a lot of kids songs out there, but many of them you almost want to pull your hair out. You're right. Just being, <laughs> You're right. My mindset was like, okay, how can we make this fun? Make it something that a parent wouldn't mind riding in the car and listening to. Let's celebrate, let's celebrate. They even tackle hard subjects like race with songs celebrating Juneteenth and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The response has been undeniable. Gracie's Corner has racked up more than 200 million views on YouTube. The cool thing to see too is that uh, not only have the kids been able to enjoy it, but also parents. For Gracie, who's now 10, the quality time with her dad is the reward. Does he ever have an idea for a song or, or video and you say, Dad, no, that, that's not, that's not Gracie. Well, mostly all the time, he's at, um, <laughs> kind of like I'm the boss of him. She graced us with a small performance of her favorite song. Come on, baby, brush your teeth and let's brush our teeth. Come on, Gracie. A lot of people are brushing their teeth because of you. Hopefully they're not doing it too much. <laughs> For this former professor, continuing to educate and empower kids is the ultimate teaching moment. Coming up, we're getting our hands dirty, taking you into the garden. That's after the break.
We're back on the boost with a look at the healing power of Mother Nature. Gotti Schwartz introduces us to a woman helping people grow through gardening. If you wanted to plant a beautiful garden, you might not pick them all in LA, but with the help of this mobile nursery called the Oasis, it might be exactly where you end up. It almost seems like she is this entrance to a secret garden that you can transport anywhere. She is just that. Um, I love the idea of the secret garden because she's very personal. Created by Barbara Lawson, the van helps her direct people to where they can meet her in the dirt. The name of her one-of-a-kind gardening therapy sessions. So you're telling me that we are going to do gardening. We are going to connect with the ground inside of a mall. Absolutely inside that mall, but not just any experience. You just wait and see. For Barbara, a certified grief counselor, the root of sharing her love of plants runs much deeper. What inspired this dream? This particular dream about uh, Meet Me in the Dirt was uh, born in pain. Um, when I was 24, I lost my mother. Normally, you can move through that process of grieving uh, naturally, but after about 20 years of not dealing with that pain, um, I went into a deep depression, and Meet Me in the Dirt was born. We joined Barbara inside her South Bay Galleria Sanctuary for a therapy session and watched her transform a table of strangers into a wellspring of well-being. I start by giving you journals because, yes, we're going to get dirty, but um, this work requires that we also do some of this work, meaning reflection. We are love. Strong, strong, intentional, intentional, sincere, sincere, sunshine, sunshine grateful, and yearning. and yearning. I'm loving all these words. So right behind you, and then take whatever time you need, there's an assortment of plants. I want you to get two babies that call your name. Exactly like my daughter. Oh, uh, okay. This looks like a crazy hair. Yes. Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> no plan is perfect unless it's fake. There is absolutely scientific proven facts that show us that digging in dirt releases stress, releases anxiety, and it helps us to heal. You have your pen, you have your journal. What is this good soil getting ready to represent in your life? Think about this nursery pot. What would happen if this baby stayed in this nursery pot? Your new environment is where you're going to allow yourself to grow and to flourish beyond where you were. So sometimes in life, things have to come against you. Press. Press all around. What is it that's doing that to you? What's squeezing you on all sides? As we worked through the session, it became obvious that the dirt symbolizes so much more. When I placed my first baby in the pot, she was leaning over and I wanted her to stand up. <laughs> and I had to check myself in that moment and say, it's okay for her to lean. It's okay for her to get steadied over time. And it's very, very parallel to some personal things that I'm dealing with right now. So I'm trying to hold it together. <laughs> but it's deeper. When she was talking about how some of the leaves, this is the plant's way of, of shedding the toxicity. Yeah. Do you see beauty in that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there's beauty in the growth, there's beauty in the shedding. When you look at it knowing what the plant's doing, all of a sudden it becomes beautiful. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It reminds you of yourself. In sharing, you actually become a very powerful person. That's yes. right. And we're so afraid to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. When being vulnerable, it's actually incredible. And for an hour, we listen to the wisdom found in Mother Nature from a gardener of plants and a gardener of people. And when you're removing yourself out of that old nursery pot into your new environment, you just transition. We've connected with each other, we've shown each other love, we've added encouragement, we've made sure to tell ourselves that nothing blooms all year round. From the garden to the farm, Joe Fryer takes us to Reed's Organic Farm in New Jersey, where kids are learning valuable lessons and growing confidence. On Reed's Organic Farm in New Jersey, they're harvesting food. Mmm, good, right? While growing young minds. Beautiful. These teens live in Atlantic City, which is a mere 20 minutes away, yet feels like another world. Why do you love it so much? Because it's quiet. 78 serene acres that are home to a summer program through the Boys and Girls Club of Atlantic City. Hold the branch with one hand. The kids are learning what it takes to grow and harvest a wide range of fruits and veggies. You have to have the muscles to pull them the smile. Do you have the muscles? Yeah. Here, they're united with nature, even the pigs in the farm's animal sanctuary. They can come here and they can learn how we do things on a farm, 
but it's so important that they know that these are things that they can take home with them and share with their families. In fact, some of the food they harvest ends up at the Boys and Girls Club. Why are these so special? Because they're organic. A lesson in nutrition in a place deemed a food desert. Atlantic City has gone 15 years without a fully operated grocery store. Premier Simmons Robinson, the eight week program is having an impact. Just ask mom. I see a huge difference in his, like his attitude, his behavior. He's a lot more patient. And for Cookie Till, the farm's co-founder, that is food for the soul. When you see it have an impact on them, how does that impact you? It just makes my heart sing. It just means that change is possible. Planting seeds in more ways than one. Joe Fryer, NBC News. Coming up, we say goodnight moon as we honor a bedtime classic. Stay with us. To the boost. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the release of the first book from author and cartoonist Mo Willems. His work has defined children's literature, and Joe Fryer caught up with him at the Strand Bookstore right here in New York to discuss the pigeon that started it all. Can I have a glass of water? No. This year, the literary world is celebrating 20 years of the pigeon. First name the, last name pigeon a beloved children's book character, even if he is a little bossy. The pigeon has wants, the pigeon has needs, and the pigeon does not know the difference between the two of those things. Mo Willems is the author cartoonist who first gave voice to the pigeon in 2003 with the award-winning book, Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. It chronicles the persistent pigeon's push to take the wheel as readers resoundingly reply, No! I was by no means assured that a book about a rat with wings talking directly to kids and making them yell no at the top of their lungs was going to be something I would get to make a career out of. What is it about the pigeon that has endured for so long, do you think? I know that for myself, I am always trying to make 49% of the book, and I want the audience to make 51%. To Willem's books are an invitation, a spark, a starting point for kids and grown-ups. I am more concerned about the play afterwards. What happens when they finish reading? Do they want to read again? Do they want to make their own stories? That is what excites me. It likely won't surprise you that Willems began his career as a writer and animator on Sesame Street before shifting to books. Does it amaze you just how many books for children there are? I think it's great because there are so many different types of children. 
He has written more than 70 books with characters grown in what he calls his idea garden. From the duo of Elephant and Piggy to the quiet Knuffle Bunny, a story inspired by Willem's own child, Trix. It's a very special time when a grown-up and a kid are reading together. It's very intimate. And it's an opportunity for the kid to bond with the grown-up. During the pandemic, Willems hosted lunch doodles. Kind of looks like an ice cream cone. More recently, he created a comedy opera with renowned soprano Renee Fleming. Opera might be the most adult thing I can think of. <laughs> In some ways, but it's similar because they yell. They have emotions, and they tell you directly how they feel. Willems also has a new pigeon book for adults, filled with pigeon wisdom, and like many of his books, a whimsical surprise. Now you have a pigeon mask. Some other thing that rewards rereading. A picture book does not get read. A novel gets read. A picture book gets read a billion times. After 20 years, the pigeon still can't drive the bus, but he, and Mo can keep taking us on some amazing adventures. For Sunday Today, Joe Fryer, New York. Up next, the story behind one of the most beloved books of all time, Good Night Moon. We are honoring the bedtime classic with the help of some very special little friends. This is a book called Good Night Moon. And this might make you sleepy. Please don't fall asleep. <gasps> when I first saw Good Night Moon and read it, I was like, wow, like what is it about this book that's captivating kids? And then I realized it's everything. It's a child's room, it's a child's brain, and it's the calming effect that words on a page can have. So powerful that Goodnight Moon has sold more than 40 million copies and has been translated into 26 languages. And a little toy oh. read around the earth. Goodnight Room. And high above it. There's even a trove of parodies goodnighting everything from presidents to iPads. Goodnight cow jumping over the moon. And more than a few famous faces have big goodnight to mush and brush. And good night to the little lady who is whispering hush. But for grown-ups, perhaps more enchanting than the book itself is the larger-than-life tale of the woman behind it, Margaret Wise Brown. She had a very big personality. She was very flamboyant. I think if you picture sort of an old-fashioned, shishy, authoritative children's book author, she wasn't that way at all. Instead, this New Yorker had a storied love life filled with broken engagements and forbidden romances. She came from wealth and lived lavishly. When she signed her first book contract, she spontaneously decided to buy an entire flower vendor's cart full of flowers, and she filled up her apartment with all of the flowers and then invited all of her friends over for a party. And I think that really sums up just who she was. Though Brown claimed she did not especially like children, she could speak their language. With a writing style as pioneering as her spirit, her books had a childlike simplicity that was radical for the day. She believed that this was what children's books sh should be, but at the time she published it, there were many very prominent, very important people in the world of children's publishing who didn't agree with her. In fact, when Goodnight Moon was first published in the 40s, the head librarian at the New York Public Library refused to stock it. Her mandate lasted two decades, though today the book is one of the library's top checkouts. Goodnight Moon is definitely one of the most popular books probably in the history of the library, even given that it wasn't here for the first 20 years after it was published. And good night. Nice. Good job. As for Margaret Wise Brown, hers was a brilliant life cut short. At just 42, her career was flourishing and she was engaged to a Rockefeller, but she died suddenly from complications after a minor surgery. She would never know just how her work had transformed children's literature and bedtime forever. And a quiet old lady who was whispering, and in this world where everything is moving so fast and so many things change, and there's a new this and a new that, sometimes it's nice to just look and go, some things are just as they always were. And that is really what Good Night Moon is. Good night noises everywhere. 
Just ahead, the latest viral video to boost your day. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Boost. We have one more video that is sure to make you smile. Check it out. A mom got her family together for a vacation in Mexico last week, but there was one person who couldn't join them. Her son, William, he was busy with duties in the Army. Or so she thought. Watch what happens while they are recording a video message for him. William, we're all in Mexico. Hey, we <laughs> wish you were here. We love you very much. Please, please come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We love you so much. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Are you serious? Oh. Oh man, mom getting a surprise of her life. Uh, most of the family was in on it. Uh, she was not. The two hadn't seen each other in a while. The mom not said, "Go." That's oh, she was really missing her little boy. That is all for today. We hope we're able to start your day off with a little boost in positivity, and we are going to do it all over again tomorrow. So please join us for more of The Boost right here on Today All Day. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Pop Start Plus, where we are celebrating the most wonderful time of the year. It's never too late to spread some early holiday cheer. Today, we're keeping it festive with a little Christmas in July special. Now, whether you're lounging in the sun or curled up enjoying a nice uh, drink or in the cold air conditioning, we still have what you need to get in that holiday spirit. It's only six months away until Christmas. Let's kick things off with America's dad, Tim Allen. You might know him from the 90s sitcom Home Improvement or his role in Toy Story, but he's also been known for another role where he made others feel warm and jolly. It's no surprise he starred in the classic Santa Claus. In fact, it was a trilogy. And in 2022, he reprised his role in the latest installment, The Santa Clauses. The series explores what happens when Santa just can't be Santa forever. NBC Entertainment contributor Chris Witherspoon got inside the scoop on that series from Tim himself and the cast. Take a look. I loved, loved, loved this series. Tim, I'm gonna get straight to it. The question everyone's asking is what made you say yes to bringing back this character after 16 years? This movie, regardless of its value, it comes on every Christmas and people love it. So I, I have to live this creature every year in my head, the Santa Claus, love to. Then business affairs, I know them all really well. So would you think of doing one? I said, okay, and it got really, really good. And then they put together a team, My, I, some help with me, and put together a team. <clears throat> and it just rolled into a very coherent script. It's magic and wonderful. You know, I have a funny Cheeto. Put cocoa in it instead of coffee. Put a little peppermint in there if you have that. Chop up some cookies and um, sprinkles. Name for the order? <laughs> Santa. Sir, my job is hard enough. 
Ho, ho, ho. Elizabeth, um, now listen, you slayed uh, as Mrs. Claus since 2002. So I have to know, what was your reaction when you were told they wanted to bring this, this character, this franchise uh, to TV? Really? Really? No, really? Nah, -uh. really? Really, are you sure? Are you sure? I didn't believe it for months, even after we made the deal and I was waiting to do it. I kept calling my manager and being like, is this really happening? I, I think I have ha I had so much joy playing Carol and I couldn't believe I was coming back to it after 16 years. Wait a minute, maybe your name isn't Carol because sometimes I call you and you don't answer me. Carol was my before name. <sighs> is this going to become a thing? No, you asking me to marry you and gaining 200 pounds was a thing. This is much bigger. I was really excited to see what she'd be like in her in her midlife. I thought it was really fun. All right, Cal, I'm curious, were you a fan of the Santa Claus film franchise before joining the series? Yeah, I was a fan of the franchise before. Uh, I, you know, the, I, the, the first movie came out when I was in high school, so that got added to the, to the Christmas movie rotation pretty early. And then was, a you know, Tim Allen, obviously hilarious. So I've been a, a fan of his and Elizabeth Mitchell. So the idea that I got to come on for these six chapters um, the kid in me was very excited, but also the the adult who loves Christmas movies was was equally thrilled. Amazing, amazing. And you mentioned getting to work alongside Tim Allen, being a big fan of his growing up. Is there a moment on set working with Tim that stands out? Something that was like a favorite moment that you had with him? Yeah, I think so. I mean, t Tim is so funny uh, on screen, obviously, but even off, right? Like always improvising, always making people laugh. He's just so giving and funny and fun to be around uh, when you're when you're shooting scenes. I, I, uh, I, I hope I get to work with him again. Elizabeth, I have to give you a round of applause. I did not know until I read the notes that you were Tim Allen's real life daughter. I didn't realize that. And you were phenomenal, by the way. I'm so curious, is there something new that you learned about your dad while being on set with him and working with him? I feel like I forget sometimes about how much that he's done and how many people he's like, impacted and touched and and when I was on set and I saw how people were so surprised and, and happy and overjoyed to see him in that Santa suit again it like made me think about how much he's done you know and how many people people's lives that he's changed with this with this franchise wow dad Sandra they warned you this is what I look like here it's its dad, me. And Austin, was there anything that you observed from your on-screen daddy that kind of is going to like stick with you throughout your career as an actor? Oh, so much. But just for one would be how it really did seem like second nature for him. Maybe it was just because he's been doing it for a while. But even with here with Elizabeth Mitchell, like those two, they had an aura about them. Like when they were on set in like the garments about like them being Mr. and Mrs. Claus, where the little extra kids that were like little elves, they would really think they were like Santa and Mrs. Claus and just watching them kind of handle this role and like them knowing how to talk to these little kids was so awesome and sweet to see. I'm curious, Elizabeth, having worked with Tim now for 20 yeah. years in this role, um, did you observe anything about how he tackled Santa this time around that might've been different from the other time? I mean, you know, he's such an improvisational actor. Um, and I think that what I learned this time is what a loyal guy he is. <laughs> like he he has the same people working for him that have been his entire career. I watched him, you know, go in and out of this of this Santa and then fall right back into that that gentle, knowing, magical creature. And I still kind of don't know how he does it. He arrives on set and I just wanna throw my arms around him, which I do a lot. I feel like there's there's nothing written in the script about her kissing Santa. Santa, and I think I kiss him like 50 times. <laughs> so. I love that. You know, I don't say this enough, but being Santa has meant the world to me. Once a year, I get to spread joy and magic to people everywhere. But I couldn't do it without all of you, especially you two, joy and magic. <laughs> uh, and Tim, you know, your last TV series that I feel like the whole family came together to watch in a huge way was Home Improvement. My family was part of that, that tradition. I'm so curious, what are you most excited for for people to, to see when they watch this TV series, The Santa Claus, as a family? I wanted this to be available for children and families. It's family friendly. It's also got adult humor in it. Family is important. Giving is important. Being honest with yourself is important. And humor is important. Mm -hmm. So we, we hit all those beats. Look, we, we live in a polarized, cynical world. That's just the reality. And this is one of those wonderful Christmas movies that you can watch with anybody 
um, and it's going to bring out hope and kindness and all of the good things that I think we love about Christmas and the holiday season. So watch it with people you love. It's also kid friendly. I can finally show my nieces and nephews something that I've been in, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, it's always great to hear from one of the best in the business, the great Tim Allen. Coming up next, a love at Frost Sight story. Mean Girl star Jonathan Bennett stars in the romantic comedy The Holiday Sitter. Hallmark's first film to feature a leading gay couple. In it, Jonathan plays a workaholic bachelor who finds himself in an unexpected romance with a neighbor. Today, contributor Donna Farazan caught up with him to discuss this role. Let's see how that went. Well, first of all, congratulations on The Holiday Sitter. This movie is a big deal because you're making history as the first Hallmark Christmas movie to ever feature a leading gay couple. You are the star. You are the executive producer. What does it mean to you to be a part of such change? Wow. Uh, thank you. It's so exciting to have created this story and this world that everyone's going to get to see. It means a lot because I, I know growing up, I never saw a love that looked like my love in Christmas movies. I love Christmas movies. I love them so much. And I would sit there with my family watching all these, but I would never see a love that looked like mine. So to be able to create that and bring the story to the screen, especially at the number one place for Christmas in the entire world, which is Hallmark Channel, like to get to do all, to have all those pieces line up perfectly, it's just, it's, there are no words for it of how excited I am. Whoa. Whoa. Hi. Who are you? I'm the guy who lives here. Jason DeVito, your family's neighbor. How would you describe this movie for people who haven't seen it yet? The nugget of the idea came from one of my favorite movies growing up, which was Uncle Buck. I think, and I think so many, especially queer uncles like myself, I'm a gunkle to so many, so many nieces and nephews that are biological and all my friends' kids. And so I thought that was a really great premise to start a story. And so this movie is about Sam, my character, who comes home for the holidays and has to babysit his niece and nephew, who he hasn't really been around for like five years. And he's the eternal bachelor living in New York City, living the life, and comes home and has to put on Christmas. And then we have George Krissa, who plays Jason, who is our hunky neighbor next door. So we meet, and it's funny because in the movie, Right away, I don't know that Jason's gay. And you see, have me just kind of like being nervous around this really attractive guy. And then all of a sudden, you'll see, there's a moment where I realize, oh, he might actually be a potential date. And it's my favorite part of the movie. If you ask my best friend, Ellie, it's because I'm always looking for a reason to run. Don't ask me why. Well, maybe it's easy to find a reason to run if there's not a better reason to stay. I'm totally quoting you on that. You're welcome. <laughs> and I think people might, people will watch this and their reaction will be love is love is love, love and it makes you feel so warm. I mean, yeah. is that, is that sort of what your, what your intention was with putting out this? <sighs> So um, my intention in creating this movie, you know, I want to be very clear. We never set out to make a gay movie or a, a queer rom-com. We set out to make a really good romantic comedy that's centered around Christmas. It's centered around love and family and is a classic fish out of water story, which I love. The only difference is both the leads are men. And I think that's what sets this movie apart from every a lot of other movies is it's made for a wide audience. Just like Christmas is for everybody and Hallmark Channel is for everybody. That's what we set out to do. What a great guy. That looks like a lot of fun. But wait, there's more coming up on the show. We have a chat with Laura Linney about the rom-com Love Actually. And later we're going to hear from Jim Carrey about playing the Grinch. There's a holiday classic who, of course, stole Christmas. Coming up.
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. We're keeping things merry here in July and bright. And it's a little Christmas in the summer special here. And whether it's Broadway or the silver screen, actress Laura Linney is a force to be reckoned with. Back in 2003, she stopped by 1A to discuss her career and stellar performance in the romantic comedy that is so popular still, Love Actually. And in it, she stars as Sarah, an office worker with a crush on her colleague. She shared how it all plays out. Exactly how long it is that you've been working here? Two years, seven months, three days, and I suppose, what, two hours? And how long have you been in love with Carl, our enigmatic chief designer? Um, two years, seven months, three days, and I suppose an hour and 30 minutes. Well, as much. Do you think everybody knows? Yes. Laura Linney, good morning. Good morning. Poor, pitiful, but lovable Sarah. I know. Poor <laughs> Sarah. She's trying. She's she really so is. sweet, and there's something so endearing about her. But tell us a little bit more about your character. She's a woman who works in an office, and she has a crush on a coworker. Um, who's played by Rodrigo Santoro, who is <laughs> utterly divine and, <laughs> oh, and boy. criminally handsome. Um, and very shy himself. And uh, Yes, and the two of us sort of skirt around each other in this office, and they finally sort of find each other, but she's someone who has, who's burdened by family obligations. And she has she, a brother who's She ill. has a brother who is ill. I guess who, that we don't want to give too much away, because no. you discover it during the course of the movie. You don't yes. quite understand who right. she's talking to on the cell phone all, right. all the time, and then but you realize. A, there's a pull that she has that keeps love from really entering her life and keeps her from really accepting what does come to her. Which is so tragic, because finally, finally, you think, ah, she has a chance to be yeah. happy, to find love. I know. And yet, I know. she doesn't. And it's one of the few stories in the movie where the couple doesn't live happily ever after. It's not sort of a romantic ideal, because Obviously, many of the vignettes are about people falling in love, and she just sort of just never quite gets it doesn't, there. It doesn't happen for her, and you know, sadly, it, 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 that's life. You know, it doesn't happen for everybody, and usually there are reasons why. And I think it's important, you know, that, that there are reasons why. Right. That it is there. It sometimes comes painfully or awkwardly or at the wrong time, but... There are always reasons why things don't work out. Meanwhile, I know that the, the people who made the movie, Richard Curtis and I guess yes. his whole posse, yes, kept saying, crowd. Laura Linney would be great for this role. Laura, we need yeah. someone like Laura Linney. I, it, but they didn't approach you right away. Did you think that they thought maybe it would be too small a role? Was it because oh, you're no. American? Uh, why I, I do think, you think it... I think probably originally they, they did want an all-British cast, which I completely understand. And, and I somehow snuck in there. <laughs> oh, my God. And I watched you and I thought, that is so cool. Laura's the only... Really? Weren't you the only one? Well, American? Billy Bob Thornton. Oh, has Billy a Bob Thornton, who plays well. the, so the president the of the United States. But it's a pretty small role. You're, you really are the only American with a, with a strong story line. And, and was that fun? Because was, what an extraordinary cast. It was amazing. We it should was, mention some of the folks real quick. Just, yeah, just Liam, a few. Neeson, Liam Neeson. Who, of course, you work with on the yes. Chris Bowl. You're going to do a movie with on the Kenzie's. Yes. Yes. Kenzie's, and I'll talk about that in a moment sure. if we have time. Can you think I'm talking fast enough? No, Emma Thompson is in it. Colin right. Firth. Yes. Um, I'm leaving people out. Alan Rickman. Right. Rowan Atkinson. Kira Knightley. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Martine McCutcheon. There's just a slew. It goes on and on and on. Well, it's always great to hear from Laura Linney, one of the best out there. Thank you, Laura. Coming up next, audiences fell in love with Jim Carrey's hilarious performance as the Grinch, who hatches a scheme to pose as Santa Claus and silence the Who's holiday cheer once and for all. Well, Jim stopped by our show back in 2000 to share how he prepared for the role of Grinch. Let's take a look. You have said that you always fantasized about playing the Grinch. It was sort yeah. of a dream come true. Is this something that, that you sort of thought about or you read about in childhood? Did you love Dr. Seuss's? Uh... First of all, I don't think. <laughs> I'm all instinct. Oh my God. Can you... instinct. Uh, you know, when I, when I, yeah, when, from this big, I mean, you know, the Grinch was the coolest thing in the world. First I saw, you know, I read the books and then, right. you know, I, I drew a lot of pictures when I was a kid. So, you know, the, the, the drawings themselves just completely sucked me in. I love them. They're so original. And that's what's great about being a part of this is that you kind of, you know, I just want to attach myself to other people's genius. <laughs> you know, well, you've got genius you know? of your own because you oh, are so thanks. remarkable thanks. in this movie. And before we talk about what a great job I think you did playing the Grinch, you met Dr. Seuss's widow, Audrey yes. Geisel, right? Geisel, yes. And, uh, and she obviously is very proprietary, appropriately Absolutely. proprietary about Real her husband's work. 
incredible <laughs> all over the set. Wouldn't leave me alone. No, come on, Tap that's me not on the true. Shoulder. No, not like this. Like this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but you met her before the movie started, and you kind yeah. of had to audition for her, didn't you? Well, I didn't audition for her. Andy Kaufman uh, did an impression of Jim Carrey doing The Grinch, which was because I wasn't around. <laughs> I had no zip code at that time. <laughs> <laughs> but Couldn't you did meet with her, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was and what was that like? Was it a little bit nerve wracking? Uh, not really. No. You know, I'm just kind of a you know headlong into things type of person. So you know. I figure if I screw up, I'm a scatter bomber. You know what I mean? I just go out there and I spew. I spew and, you know, see what happens. Now, this has a backstory. <laughs> I was talking with these guys uh, a little bit earlier with Al and, and Matt and Ann. And Al is really fun to listen to, by the way, when, when the feed is on in the dressing room and there's no, you know, it, when you actually go to commercial or something right, like that. Right. But you don't see anything. You just see the weather map and you hear Al out there in the street going like, hey, don't touch me. Get off. Hey, what? Not there. Hey, get your hands off the mic. I swear to God, I'll hit you. It's hilarious. You no, know, that was our little secret, too. Oh, really? Now the Is world that knows. Real? I'm sorry to, <laughs> anyway, to show all the rough edges. But here. I was talking to them earlier, as I was saying, this is very hard. I don't care where you're from. <laughs> and they were, I was telling them, in this movie, you get a backstory. The Grinch has the abuse excuse, basically. Yeah. And there that you go. accounts for his. Uh, very gnarly personality, right? He's a callous. Right? He's a callous. You know, it's like a lot of us. We build, you know, in these days we build up a callous against the world. You know, we get hurt a few times, and then it's just like this callous starts to build. But you he know? had a very he needs to be scraped. He had a know? very traumatic childhood, though, that we yeah. really don't know about in the book. Right. He was dropped from the sky and kind of abused in school because he did look different. And after all, he had a beard when he was sure. in second grade, sure. right? Sure, right. <laughs> so he, I'm not going to give away the, the story, but, but there's a reason that he's so grouchy. Yeah, he steals Christmas. There it is. Don't have to go now. <laughs> Any calls? You have no messages? Odd. Better check the outgoing. If you utter so much as one syllable, I'll hunt you down and gut you like a fish. If you'd like to fax me, press the star key. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, well. That's more like it. <laughs> that yeah. was a lot of fun doing that. I bet it was. Yeah. See, they didn't have that, that whole thing sliding into the you know, chair when, when I got there. Uh-huh. I Did just you was come like, up had a that? couple of coffees and went, hmm. I was going to ask you Slide how... Slide into the chair from the ceiling. How much of this is the, the writers and how much input... I mean, you must have had a Norbs input. All me. No, because seriously, because there is Jim Carrey just all over this movie. Like when you'd say, oh, the humanity. And yeah. you would make these little jokes about what's the deal. Well, and you know, it's the kind of thing where I just can't leave things alone. You know, I just, I, I find it really difficult to, uh, you know, like Shakespeare would be tough for me because I have to stay in a groove. You know, you yeah. got to do the iambic, miamic pentameter. And uh, <laughs> that's what they're doing down there right now in Florida. Uh, and... Uh, you know, you just, you, know, you have to stick with it. You know, I like getting in the space and finding new things and, and exploring. So, so, yeah, there was a script there and it was really good and it was, everything was great and it would have been fine. But you get in the space and suddenly I think to myself, well, there's the dog. He's just sitting there. So I, you know, got a flash of, you know, something that we've all Brilliance. done. At, at, <laughs> well, yes, really. Uh, you know, something we've all done with our pets at some point is try to outsmart them. You know what I mean? And like take some kind of infantile pleasure in the fact that we're smarter than a dog. You know, like sh throw the fake stick, you know, like ha <laughs> ha. That was a lot of fun to look back at. Coming up, straight from today's vault, we're going to hear from actor Macaulay Culkin about starring in Home Alone. Stay with us.
Thanks for sticking around with us here on Popstart Plus. We've been having a good time digging into the Today archives and it wouldn't be a Christmas in July special if we didn't mention this classic film. It's been 30 years since Home Alone hit theaters. It is still cemented as a true pop culture masterpiece. When he was just 11 years old, Macaulay Culkin gave us the scoop on the film back in 1991. Let's go all the way back for it. Ah! Macaulay Culkin, the angel-faced kid with the devilish pair of lungs, is this season's biggest box office draw. His movie, Home Alone, produced by John Hughes, has grossed more than $170 million since November. If you're one of the few people who hasn't seen the movie yet, it's about a little boy who accidentally gets left home when his family goes to Paris for Christmas. Macaulay plays Kevin McAllister, the kid left alone to do battle with a bumbling pair of burglars. You guys give up? Oh yeah, thirsty for more. One of the perks of my job is that I can get a one-on-one -on -one interview with a Hollywood heartthrob, so Macaulay and I set a date at Rumpelmeyer's in New York City. Oh, look what he's gonna have. How about that, huh? Mm. We went for ice cream, but I got his scream as well. Give me one of those screams. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, thanks. You had to do that a lot, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still dressed in his Catholic school uniform after a long day in class, 10-year-old Mac, that's what his friends call him, shared with me his most personal thoughts. Are all the kids uh, kind of gaga over you in school, or do they treat you... Can you get that cherry thing on your mouth, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> or do they just treat you like a normal They just treat guy? me normal, yeah. They do? Yeah. Mac's rise to stardom began at age six with the movie Rocket Gibraltar. He got to work with Burt Lancaster and proceeded to give Burt some advice. You told him what? Don't step on my lines. So I'm like... What did he say to that? He, I don't know. You know, I was six and I don't really remember that much. But he thought it was pretty movie. funny, huh? Oh, yeah. His career continued with a big role alongside John Candy in his first John Hughes film, Uncle Buck. Where's your wife? Don't have one. How come? It's a long story. Do you have kids? No, I don't. How come? It's an even longer story. Are you my dad's brother? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 38. I'm your dad's brother, all right. You have much more hair on your nose than my dad. How well, nice of you to notice. I'm a kid. That's my job. Mac's performance in Uncle Buck made him a John Hughes favorite. He's, he's handsome, he's charming, and... Uh, He's got a good sense of humor. And most importantly, he's just, a, he's just a real kid. And like any real kid, Mac loves to have fun. On movie sets, his favorite pastime, playing poker. Who do you play poker with? Um, kids in my family and sometimes the Teamsters. On the set, then? The Teamsters on the set? Oh, yeah. I love winning money from them. And Mac says when he's home in New York, he loves to go skateboarding, which isn't always easy on Manhattan's bumpy sidewalks. You're going real fast, you go, I did it. You know, so I like to go back and go, help me. Like your hair. Thanks a lot. All right, tell me again, what, what's, what's so fun? I like yours, too. You know, yours is a little out of control, too, I, I might Not add. as much as yours. <laughs> Are you here all by yourself? Ma'am, I'm eight years old. You think I'd be here alone? I don't think so. Well, wow, that's going pretty far back right there. That is a ton of fun to see from Macaulay Culkin and Home Alone. Well, guys, that's going to do it for today's show. Hope you had as much fun as we did getting in the holiday spirit in July. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you soon right here on Popstar Plus. <laughs>
All right, we're celebrating the 4th of July the best way we know how with good company and delicious food. Hey. Hey. Here with us, the host of the Food Network's The Kitchen, our friend Sunny Anderson, and she's cooking exactly what we want. No, I mean, honestly, oh, is it though? Because yeah. I don't know. It's, a, it's some big meat on them big bones Wait, we about to about cook. Ribs. Can I tell ribs. you something? Yes. Hoda loves Ribs. I love a rib. Are love. You no love. Oh, but, she eats his ribs. This. But I don't know. I've never seen a cut this huge. Wow. Well, this rib. is the Baranosaurus Rex <laughs> cut you want to ask your butcher for. Um, I like to get the flanken. And so this yeah. is just flanken that's not broken down for you. So you oh, can okay. ask for that you if you want. You can ask for the big cut. Okay. Yeah, you can ask for whatever you want at the butcher. And if you don't like this cut of rib, I'm just going to show you a really good technique Rob. to do some honey barbecue ribs. Ooh, yes. Honey, honey barbecue. barbecue. Okay. So very simple for you. I just want you to help me mix up the rub. So we've already got some paprika in there. That's all paprika. That's salt. Yeah, it's a big, look at the Whoa. big old piece of yeah, meat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we got some cayenne pepper. Okay. Uh, some cumin, onion powder, mm -hmm. garlic powder. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And some dried oregano. So you're just going to mix that together, and that's going to be our rub. Right. Pass it over to me, and I'll rub it onto our meat okay. here. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'm going to just whisk, whisk it. it. Yeah, just whisk it up. So that's the dry rub. Yeah, okay. and if you're going to make your, your ribs today, and you're like, I don't have all these pantry items, but I've got that one-size-fits-all barbecue rub in my pantry, just use that yeah. if you like it. Yeah. Do you, do you just you rub both sides or just both one? Sides. Oh, and both sides. massage both sides. it into that huge yes. rib. It's called Look a rub that. for a reason. <laughs> a rub for a <laughs> reason. <laughs> Are so crazy. <laughs> okay, so I've got the oven set at 275 degrees. Okay. So the key to tender ribs is time and moisture and a low temp. Slow okay. and low. Okay. Okay. So you put some it. aluminum. Yes. We're gonna cover it up with aluminum foil very tightly and get okay. it into our 275 degree oven. Oh, just 275. I know, because yes. low and Seems slow. Like low like... and slow. And how long is that gonna? This cook? is gonna be for about two to three hours. Really, it's gonna depend okay. on the size of of your ribs, okay. right? And make sure you put it in there fat side can up. Can I ask Wait, you, can you ask That's the butcher mm -hmm. and say how long do I need to cook? This is a medium sized rib, how yes. long do I cook? Plus, oh. Yes, because I feel like the butcher and the, fish, the fishmonger can tell you how to prepare what they are mm -hmm. breaking yes, down. Yes, right? Make them your friend. Okay, good. I was so much friends with my butcher one time. He asked me for a date and I said, no thank you. Why? Because where am I gonna get my meat if the date's not right? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so right, just don't right. be too friendly with you're your right. butcher. Yeah, you gotta okay, watch that meat. So you, you said that fat side the oven. Fat, fat side up. up. That's so important. the fat trickles the down fat into the meat. How do you know yes. that the fat, fat side is up? Oh, well, you you'll tell. be able to see the layer of fat. Okay. It'll be yeah. as as different like than white. the meat. It's okay. white and it's really mm -hmm. um, now, gelatinous. So now here's the honey. Now when we're done, straight up honey, and we can kind of tell that this is almost there. We're gonna take it out. We're gonna flip it over, and then we're gonna get the honey part of the barbecue onto it. Oh my! Now. Wow. Look at all that. Mm -hmm. wow. I'm into that. Now, if you have hot honey, a.k.a. Oh, spicy yes. honey, love, love, spicy love. honey. Do it. On pizza. It's, do it. It's so good on pizza. It is so. It's my jam. You and I are best friends. <laughs> it's just dripping. Okay, so you're going to get that back into the oven. How long? Uh, For about 30 to and 45 minutes. you're covering minutes. it again or not? No cover no because cover. we want it to caramelize. Look, over Take here. a look at this. I, mean, I don't even piece know how to. Wait, what do you do? do you, and do you have yeah. anything I can dip it in? Yeah, well, no, it's like dry. It's just the rub. So, you know, some people like a rub. And a right, sauce. Right, I get in there. Right sauce. Oh, it's already cooked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I want to show oh you how to make spoon mm. bread. Are you guys familiar with what spoon yes. bread is? Mm -hmm. Did you like it? Love. This right? Love. You can do mm. this today with uh, whatever cut of rib mm. you have. Mm. You can also do this on your mm. grill. Mm -hmm. You want to just mm. make sure that you cover it it's completely. Done. It's all about the moisture. Okay. Okay, so this is spoon bread. Uh -huh. It's just like cornbread, but it's like a pudding vibe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? So in here, we're going to get some chorizo. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is my Tex-Mex spoon bread. I know. Bread. I'm oh. love, you know what? Just, I just, feel just, like you're doing this for me. Okay, I'm on your that's show, honey. I yes. Feel like you're doing this for me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's making me happy. Yes, okay, but also, I did four years of high school in Texas. Texas and enlisted I, in the Air Force there, yes. so I'm also doing it for myself. Yes! <laughs> yes! I love it. All right, so you're going to mix that around okay. and get that browned kind of like um, ground beef. You know, it's going to look like that as it cooks. It's going to be a little bit hotter. I'm doing good. Yeah, okay. So now here in my pot, I've got some buttermilk. I've got mm. some cornmeal. Yes. And you're just going to get in here and that. mix it up. That looks good. Like, yeah. So it's going to look like loose grits. Yeah. And then we're going to temper, right? Because this is hot and this is cold. We don't want the eggs to scramble. So we're going to oh. take just a little bit here. Ah. Look at that. See, we would totally we're scramble the eggs. It yeah. been yucky. Can I tell you something? My grandma has a recipe where she has eggs and hot liquid. She does not temper, and it turns out perfect okay. every time. Yeah. All right. She's just got grandma hands. You know oh, what I mean? Let's go down there and check it out. So then once everything feels warm, you're going to mix Ooh, everything look how together. Fun this is. 
come to the mm -hmm. yeah. All of that cornmeal mixture mm. into your bowl. Mm -hmm. mm. Go into the chorizo we've already cooked. You're gonna add some mm. corn. I tried to heat that up for you. Is it warm? Yummy. Mm -hmm. You're gonna add the mm. corn kernels, the cheddar cheese, mm. the mozzarella. Oh my gosh. Uh, Sunny. You know, a Come little on. bit of the red and green chili. Is that rotel? You know what it is, girlfriend. Is Texas's favorite ingredient. Mm -hmm. You put that in some queso. Hello. Right? Okay, the cheese, the cheese, <laughs> okay, some scallions. Get it in there. Are you going to put any cheese in there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mix it up. Oh, God, it's so good. Mix it up. And then you're just going to get into the oven 400 degrees for about 25, 30 minutes till it's set. Sunny. I mean, this is the best. Sunny. You like it? Yes. It's a 10 plus. <gasps> for these recipes, go to today.com slash food. We all know. Katie Lee Beagle is a Food Network star. Aww. She's also a mom to a beautiful baby daughter, Iris, almost <laughs> about to turn two. But what you may not know is that she's also a best-selling author, and she's got her book turning into a movie. How much fun yes. is that, y'all? Groundswell is about a young chef who leaves behind her dream job and boyfriend and heads to Hawaii where she meets a handsome surf instructor. Uh -huh. And Katie actually has a little starring role in this, too. Right. I have a cameo. Right. How much Let's fun take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Today we prepared for you an individual pineapple rum tribal layered with macadamia coconut frosting. And a rum glaze. Oh, well, let's get in here. I think that your cake has a really nice texture to it, a good crumb. The frosting is perfectly sweet. However, I think your presentation is lacking. Ooh. Jeez. Oh, brutal. <laughs> How was that acting for you? Oh, you know, it was real hard for me to act like I was judging a culinary competition. Exactly. <laughs> Being on the set, nervous. though. It's kind of cool. It's it like your work. It was so cool. I was pinching myself the whole time. I said, I can't believe this is happening. And the movie's different from the book, but it was really interesting to see the way it had taken on this whole new life yes. and different characters. And it, it was just I, super I, fun. I feel like you have so many new things happening, at least since we've last seeing you. You have this movie, but more importantly, you have little Irish. Yes. She's about yes. to be two years old. Yes, I can't believe it. I remember being pregnant and yes. doing my Zoom with yes. you guys yes. cooking. Was, and now here we are. <laughs> she's putting bread baskets Does on her Does she eat head. everything? No, sadly. Okay. Like, she really tortures me when okay. it comes to eating. Well, that's she's like, like our you know kids. what? It's yeah. like all yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. She would eat the bread of this yeah. that we're making. We though. love That'd pulled pork it. sandwiches, and that's what we're going to make? I love pulled pork sandwiches. We're doing a Hawaiian-inspired pulled mm. pork since Groundswell filmed in Hawaii. Okay. And I think a slow cooker in the summer is awesome because you can be at the pool yes. all day and then you come in and dinner's yeah. ready. Awesome. So let's get started. You can use a pork butt or a pork shoulder for this. We're going to do a little rub. We've got salt, garlic powder, pepper, some ground ginger. Yeah. All goes in there and gets whisked up. All kind and of Hawaiian then, inspired, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, uh, pork is so big there with having the pig roast and everything. So this is a way to have a little taste of it at home. So you leave all that just so like that. It all goes on. <laughs> it goes into the slow cooker. Now you could, if you have a browning feature on your slow cooker, you could do that. Is that what but, you're supposed to do, right? Yeah. Just yeah, lay just, it on top. And then you okay. put it right Look, in there, cover it up. And, and cook it all day. A, about eight hours on uh, low, six hours on high. You, you take, take that top off? part off? I take the fat yeah. part off. Okay? Some people don't. Right? Yeah, some people don't. I like to leave that to the side and then see it just falls Oh my gosh, apart. it's beautiful. Isn't it perfect? <gasps> so you just so use just forks. So just so tender. Okay. Yeah, we're going to make this on Sunday, actually. My mom's visiting. We're going to be hanging out, watching Is the she movie loving together. baby Iris? Oh my gosh, she's having a ball. I got pictures this morning. They're playing. Oh, cute. And uh, making forts still, and the, watching the Today Show. Does she show. still live in, in West Virginia? She does. She does. Yeah, yeah. All right. So All right. So it goes back in to the slow cooker, we're yep. going to take two cups of broth because even though we didn't add any broth to it, that pork's going to make its own. And we're going to add crushed pineapple Ooh, to it. You know that's mm -hmm. going to be good. And some hoisin sauce that's a little bit of honey in there. Mm -hmm. We've got soy sauce and sesame oil. This all gets mixed Yum. up. Yum. It goes back into our slow cooker. Okay, dump that in. For an hour. All right, let's come and back and make us some sandwiches. Get back here. I'm coming to this sandwiches. side. All right, I like a slaw on my mm -hmm. pulled Me pork. Me too. Because you've got to mm. have a little crunch, right? Yeah. So you just want to shred the, uh, I use a Napa cabbage mm -hmm. for this, shred it up, mm -hmm. make a real quick little dressing out of mm. rice vinegar. Rice vinegar makes everything taste mm -hmm. super yummy. Thank you. Sugar. We've got to mm. have a little Mrs. sweetness with the mm -hmm. bitter cabbage and celery salt, which I love. 
and then just mix it all up. Build your little sandwich. I like to use those Hawaiian rolls for mm -hmm. it. Oh my and god. Then, of course, the Hawaiian rolls are delicious. Uh, they, they give it that nice little I mean, extra everything something. about it is delicious. This and is so what's a drink? Rum punch. Mm. Okay, mm. so it's mm. fresh watermelon since that's in right now. Oh my god. Blend it up with some rum oh my and gosh. then we top it off with a ginger beer and we made little watermelon ice cubes too. Oh, of course you, you did. always go above and beyond if anything. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Cheers, we love you. Me. Come back you. and see us. Thank and for you. these recipes, mm. go to day.com slash food. with today's food and some great recipes from one of our absolute favorite chefs, Marcus Samuelson, a clean chef, philanthropist. His latest restaurant, Marcus Bar and Grill, opened this past March down in Atlanta. Before that, he debuted Havin Mar here in New York City. That was back in November. You've been very, very busy, good yes. sir. And I was excited because you just came through to the restaurant, and that means that we're officially yeah. open. When Craig uh, comes through, that means that we're open. And I'm not just saying this because you're standing here, but yeah. it was one of the best dining experiences that we've had in the city in recent memory. So, and I was there, too. Al Roker popped in. Yeah. Now, before we start cooking here, tell me about the spot down in Atlanta, because this oh, is your first restaurant yeah. down there. This is our first restaurant. And Atlanta is like brunch city. It's yes. brunch every day. And this dish that we're doing today is really inspired by brunch. It's okay. a shrimp and grits that we tweaked in from my heritage from Ethiopia, so we call it tips and bits, which is really a nice stir-fry with grits. Why do we call them tips? Tips is a, a, one of the dishes that comes from Ethiopia. Okay. One, so we're going to sear up some beef, uh, serve it with grits, and we're going to put some heat on it. But Let's you know what? It. Can I tell you how excited I am? Yeah. Because it's the first time I'm cooking outside on the plaza live. Yeah. How cool is this? Right? How cool is this? Summer's here. Wow. So we so got. What did you put in the pan to start? A little onion and garlic. Can we smell that? Can we smell that? Oh. Right? A little onion and garlic. A little onion, garlic, ginger. Some and ginger. we're going to add in our beef. Okay. Beautiful tenderloin of beef. And then this. This is Berber. This comes from my home country. What is that? What is that called? This is Berber. Berber. Berber, exactly. It's a okay. spice blend that you find all over Ethiopia. And it's a little bit, it got a little heat on it. Can I tell you what else, what, right? What oil, do, is that just olive oil? Just some olive okay, oil. Right. One of the cool things about living in New York City is that, you know, we have all these cool restaurants. Yes. And yesterday, I was invited to one of those Jenna and Hoda parties. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, they get invited to the fancy oh, party. Yes, they Like, do. we don't get invited to no. them. Savannah, you don't get invited to them. Dylan, come on, forget about it. So I walked into the Marcia Stewart was there. Oh, yeah. the party, was there, Marcus. right? Party. And I was like, I saw, I'm like, where's Jenna, where's Hoda? Danielle, restaurant Danielle yeah. turned 30 oh, oh, yesterday. Oh, oh, oh. Can we give a big shout out to yeah. restaurant Danielle? Yeah. And he was fancy. And yeah. of course, there was Hoda drinking in the corner. <laughs> you know. oh, by herself? Yeah. Oh, but she's here. You, you, you yeah. recovered fast. What's the, word, what's the word on the dish, boys and girls? It's, so it's, so good. it's really it's so good, good, right? No, but it's so much fun to be here on the plaza, yes. cooking outside, it's all bad. cooking tips and bits. I'm gonna plate this for you. So you've so, so this is done. Done. And and what do we add to it? 
a little bit, just like just like this, olive oil, a little bit of butter. Just a little bit of butter. Just a little bit of butter, uh, right? Just, uh, just a snake. Just a little bit. A skosh, if you yeah. are. So, Look, look at that. Look how oh, nice that looks, looks right? Good. Hey, Marcus, what if you can't find that spice? Because it's, I love that smoke, spice. Where do you smoke find it? Smoke paprika. Okay. You like spice. Yes. You're from Arizona. You like chili, <laughs> right? I do. I like yes. a little heat, Marcus. Yes. So you I'd like to be invited to fancy parties. <laughs> I know, but like, yeah, you know no, what? don't cut it. I got the card now. I'm next, yeah. next one, we're going to get invited dilly to. Dilly want to come. So the grits is cooked for about... 20 minutes, oh, a little bit of cream, a little bit of water. You know the grits gotta be really, really nice and I creamy. Do. I take my grits very seriously. Yes. Um, mm. it, these are just beautiful. Look at these grits right now. use water and milk. Water and milk. We Whole mix milk. it. Yes. Good. We mix it. And Some now don't like to we're ready to play. Okay. Look at this. Oh, uh, play. Look at so this. Are you guys eating over there? I don't hear any who's in us. Are we I don't hear any. I know, like, Hoda's not eating because she had, like, a fancy meal what last night. The other one. The other one. Come on, come on. And so this is on the menu. That's it. So Down at your How new spot. How do you make them it, eat so tender? Yeah. See, fancy. It's like, tender. this is tenderloin. <laughs> but, you know, you just got to cook it in a hot pan, okay. adding the berbere. Mm -hmm. It's really, really delicious. You find it at Harvin Mar in Chelsea, and you find it in an Atlanta restaurant. Mm. All right. Oh, it's so delicious. We love it when you come back. Can I just say how happy I am to be here? It's so much fun. Thank you for you having me. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you very much. Marcus Samuelson. Thank you. By the way, you can find the recipes today.com slash food. Today, food this morning, we are joined by Aisha Nurjaya, the executive chef at Shuka and Shuket restaurants right here in New York so City. Got a uh, Shuket, guys, was recently included in the New York Times list of oh the 100 God. best restaurants Woo! in New York City. Chef thank Aisha, you, congratulations. Thank you. We are all super fans. I of appreciate yours. it. I'm and happy to be here. What are we making today? Today, we are going to make grilled shrimp. But honestly, it's all about this easy sauce. Okay. It's not only a sauce, it could be a marinade, and I promise you it's going to be your go-to. Okay, great. Okay, so in here we have some ginger and garlic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw in some roasted peppers. Okay. A little bit of champagne so vinegar. So you roasted the peppers beforehand. And I peel them. Easy on the stovetop or your outdoor grill if you have. Okay. And then... Uh, you know I'm scared of the like your show. processor. I don't even know what I'm doing here, but we're <laughs> going to fake it. We're going to throw this in here, and we're just going to make sure that this is all emulsified, so there's no big chunks okay. of anything. And then our last step, super easy is to throw in some smoked paprika mm. and a little bit of lebne. You know how I love my lebne. Oh my gosh. Now that looks like sour cream. What's it called? Lebne. lebne. So it's like a pressed yogurt that we add some lemon juice and uh, sea salt to. If you can't find it, can you Greek make yogurt a is fine. Oh, Greek yogurt, okay. Uh, sour cream would work and so would creme fraiche. Okay. So we're How's just gonna pulse yeah. this again, I'm sorry, go ahead. How's it tasting, folks? Oh my God. It's, it's the best shrimp you've ever had. Uh, you guys are too good to level. me. Too good, okay. too good. 
Okay, so we're gonna drop this right now. Our sauce is in here, mm -hmm. and we're gonna move on to the shrimp. So these shrimp could be marinated up to 45 minutes or okay. up to three days. Okay. Okay. If you, we're gonna do this obviously in a pan, but at home, if you have your grill open, this would be a perfect oh, um, grill summer okay. recipe. Carson, do you have questions about the shrimp? I just, if I tried to make this, it doesn't taste like this. I promise you it will. This is why it's so simple. We have ginger, garlic, a little bit of cumin and coriander, and I'm going to throw in some lemon zest. Oh, that's lime. That's lime. Sorry. I know. I, I really know my way around the kitchen now. I love it. Okay. Because <laughs> Chef Ayesha taught me. See, this what happened the teacher and the show? student, we're having yeah. the moment right now. I wonder was canceled. So, <laughs> we're going to mix this up. And we're going to take a little bit of this marinade. Okay. You want to do that for me, please? I'm afraid. You okay, do it. Yeah. I, it. Just know I'm wearing white. It would splash you're right, over. You're right. We don't want to ruin that for you. Happen. We're going to throw a little bit of that oh, in. Just a little bit. Just a little okay. bit. And we're going to leave this. Cover this nice in your refrigerator, How and you'll long? be ready to go. 45 minutes would be the oh. minimum, but you could do it up to three days. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay. So we have some here. Mm -hmm. This is what they look like if you smell them. Mm. All that awesome. good flavors, yeah. right? So good. Yeah. Hot saute pan, a little bit of olive oil. Okay. These are going to take about three minutes on each side. Okay. Okay, so we're going to throw a few so in. So fun. Dinner. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so you, it's three minutes both. Are you just doing it by time or can you tell by looking? Too? Well, what you look for is that they get like an opaque color. If you could see yeah. they're gray when they're raw. Mm -hmm. But do you mind like that there's them. no oil in the middle here? No, I'm going to ask some of my dumb of course, questions. No, but what I, we could do, that's yeah. a great question. Okay. We could just move oh, it around, okay. zhuzh it around. But in a nonstick pan, zhuzh that kind of helps. Could you bake that off too, or do you okay. always go on the, over the stove? Can Sorry? you bake the shrimp too? Or? You can put them right in the sheet tray just like this as well. Yeah. Mm. Really. And if you if shrimp is not your thing, chicken would work well, or a cod filet, or even like brandy yeah, or something like the that. The smell is the incredible. Sauce. I love that. Okay, so I'm going to chop up some scallions, and I think we're going to get ready to plate. Okay. What are we going to do with the scallions? We're just going to cut them on a bias. Okay. I know that you. I, do you want to do this part? I'll have you do it. Nobody likes it when we'll I have the knife. <laughs> we don't think so. There will be blood. We'll leave okay. you. Okay. Okay. So actually, I know what you can do. What? I'm going to cut this open. Yeah, you know, can I know you my do way around a lime. lime on here yeah. for me. Wait, Not zest lime. or lime juice? The juice. The juice. Okay. So I'm going to take some of the sauce, and I'm going to show you the fancy way of being an artist. You're oh. just going to throw it around, really. But if you're at home, you can put it in a squeeze bottle and make your own little. Oh, cute. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to take some Dylan's of the little shrimp. boy Calvin could probably do that because he's like an expert chef 100%. now. hundred percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. I haven't taught him plating yet, though. Yeah. So. We're okay. going to throw the shrimp Definitely. on here. Yes. And you're going to be super random. You just want to make sure that you have negative space so you can kind of see everything. Okay. And if you so could pretty. grab some sesame seeds. Okay. Mm. Just and sprinkle. And sprinkle them all around. Did you do anything special with the asparagus? What do we need to know about that? The asparagus is like my springtime alarm clock. Okay. When I see it, I know good weather's on its way. <laughs> and I'm ready to get my two piece. Okay, great. <laughs> so this is did also it. easy grilling. You could put them in the oven, olive oil, salt. Yes. And then Wait, we're just. That's all you did? That's all I did. Olive sure oil, this salt. Little crisp, the crisp that's on the it. shrimp. Is that like the Maillard effect you get from searing a steak? Is it the same? It's the same thing. It's the it's the dairy that's in the lebne that gives but you that effect on the shrimp. So good. I mean, that's, that's the difference snap. maker. There, the oh, crunch on it is like All right, a, perfect. A steak. Oh my god! And that's sick. Crazy. How is an airline Aisha, not hired you? How do you do this? To, I mean, this is crazy. <laughs>
back to school and work routines looming right in front of us. We have simple solutions for dinner. Chris. Yeah, this is actually a really simple one. Our good friend Alex Guarnaschelli is here. Alex is about to launch a new restaurant at this year's U.S. Open called Fair. Hey. Ooh, so cool. good to have you back, Alex. So good to have you back in person, in uh -huh. the flesh. Hadn't seen in a couple years. So this morning we're going to make a little chicken pie art, it looks like. Yes. So we start with the chicken breast and we butterfly it, cut it in half so it's thinner. And this is really quick cooking. Okay. And you also get more bang for your buck. You know what I'm saying? How do you do that? What's I was the just easiest say, way to do that? How do you make it flat? So the best way to do that is to take a chicken and literally what they say, butterfly, yeah. cut it in half and open it up like two wings it's of a butterfly. Uh -huh. And then you just pound it out, which is good. You know, if we're not going to the gym, we're getting that workout with the chicken <laughs> pie art. Right, so we sear it in hot oil, a few minutes on each side. Little frise salad with, you know, little bitter wow. greens. Right. Right, with a little, a little mustard dressing. And I like once you mm. cook these, just a oh couple, just a little bit of that mustard dressing. That little, like, oh, what happened here? Right. And you then made on the that chicken, yourself? I was about to say, you just sprinkled a little salt on it. Is that it for your, how did you season your yeah, chicken? Yeah, you know what? I like when chicken tastes like chicken. Let's, uh, let's, right, let's, right, let's, let's be Bring real. back the chicken. People yeah. are always, you know, Over dipping it in sour cream and whatever else. It. No, Stop. Come on. <laughs> grandma, you say, right? Wait, Alex, <laughs> is it, no, do, you say, do you pronounce the D in Payard or is it Payard? It's Payard. You say the D? No. So just a little Somewhere bit. Somewhere in the middle. Forty-two percent yes. <laughs> uh, 58 percent no. Okay. Hey, a lot of great tomatoes out right yeah. now. Yes. So our right, next dish, so the, and these are dishes you're going to get at fair at my rest. By the way, I've never had so much. I feel like no. I have a posse. I know. Um, a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Yes, yeah, so everybody yes, line up. Literally. Okay. So tomatoes cut in half. Uh, Ooh, cut a little back. bit in boiling water until we can peel the skin off. Mm -hmm. Right, and then we just look at this. I mean, it looks almost beautiful. Wow. Right, summer it's tomatoes, gorgeous. and then we drop that. Al, will you put the rice wine vinegar and the okay. olive oil right in there? Tomatoes, shallots, garlic, red pepper flakes. This is almost like a vinaigrette. This is actually vegan. This yeah. sauce, Perfect. kind of by accident, a little oregano and a little sugar, but no dairy in here. Yeah. Wow. And what what we do is we just cook this. We let it stew oh, a little bit. Beautiful. Mm. We blend it, mm. and then we toss. Um, the pasta in the sauce, I saved a little pasta water. Oh, look at that. So why, why, why don't you store, Chef? Okay, I yes, know you know how to Chef cook. <laughs> a little pasta water that you save from cooking the pasta to loosen that up. Oh. Alex, the tomatoes, we noticed they're not red. Um, do they have a different flavor? They, they, so these are lower acid tomatoes. They're yellow tomatoes. Okay. I just love saying that. You just yeah. sound yeah. like you did something super unusual. <laughs> and all you did was buy a tomato and you're like, yes, I was up so all night. <laughs> so here they are. Yeah, and they're so beautiful. And they have this, yes, this great mild taste. Mild, OK. Now, yeah. this dish can be vegan so easily, which I love, or just vegetarian. Okay. You can drop some spicy brown sausage on there if you Ooh, want, Al. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Some cheese. Are you putting a little Parmesan yeah. on this? Hey, can you swap out the pasta? And Absolutely. You could you could do beans, for example. You could do any number of things. Or you could just use this yellow tomato sauce to make a vegetable lasagna, which is vegetables. You know what's so interesting to me is how, how, and how creamy it tastes. It's very creamy because it's got that rice wine vinegar and that olive oil wow. blended. It's almost like a vinaigrette. And the blender... And blending everything and making it smooth yeah. is that magic. Are you adding more oh cheese? Oh my God! Yeah, a little bit. Amazing. Alex, All quickly, sudden, I gotta ask you because I watch Chopped every day. Yes. What's a worse offense on Chopped? Forgetting a basket ingredient on the plate, or not seasoning a full plate at all, and it just tastes terrible? The answer is yes. No. Um, <laughs> what is worse? You know what? At the end of the day, I'm gonna say under all that pressure, it yeah. looks easy when you watch it. Mm -hmm. You got to put those basket ingredients yeah, on. That's what I thought. Even if it's like bless yeah. your heart or whatever, Get it on the or plate. like Get it on the plate. we tried, we yeah. did our best. But when you leave those ingredients off, eventually, you know, it catches up with you. You know, it's like taxes. Thank you. You're gonna pay them. Here's the thing, Alex. Oftentimes we make dishes on this show, right? And I, I try to go home and rep, and there's no way I can I do know. it. This is one of those dishes where I feel like even I could probably yeah. pull this off. And you make it look so easy. Simple. It's really simple. Yeah, it's really you, good. you cook everything together, you, you see it, it's so beautiful. You blend it, and that's it. Could you make this sauce ahead and freeze it? Oh my God. I, you can keep this in the freezer in pints or quart containers and just defrost it and use it or let it sit in the fridge. I put a little olive oil over it so it keeps longer because it keeps the well, air. How's the pasta? Well, you guys haven't gotten it. I know. I was like, I was trying to grab one for Tom. By the way, I, we're, we're, I don't know what happened here, but these three guys, they took all the cheese. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so Alex Warner, Shelley, thank you. And by the way, good luck. Best of luck with the new thank restaurant. Thank you. You can find Alex's recipes, both of the recipes, in fact, by going to our website, today.com slash food. Thank you.